the only tree in the forest. There's me on your shoulder, just chilling out. Just all like, why is she narrowing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my god, it's a talking? full table. We got six people tonight. <laughs> Woo! Let's see how long these two last. I give them a couple sessions. But, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. They go, oh my I god, Dory Teller's such a eye. douche. Don't say that. I ordered things. <laughs> <laughs> Family that plays the game together stays together. Until Thanksgiving and a Monopoly comes up, not so much. Family destroyer. Oh yeah, I keep those in boxes or in trash cans. I don't, okay. I don't let Monopoly come out. As much as I like Monopoly, I don't like Monopoly. Monopoly don't like you, so it's okay. Can you hand me those chips that are in that bag, Carolyn, right there? Those ruffles. Nom 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 Disadvantage all night. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I brought, do I get advantage? I brought the chocolate. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how my tummy feels. Oh, do you have tum tum? Look at my crack back, I brought tum -tum coconut, set. almond, dark chocolate. I brought a coconut, Omega Creek Trail dark chocolate. Basically, almond joy in flat form. Yeah. Good. With like. 90% less. At the same time. <laughs> no, 90% less coconut. You. She's allergic to nuts. Nut you didn't have one of these, though. How about peanut oil? Nope. Yes. Okay. Peanut okay. oil? Oh, wait, no. This one's got hazelnuts. I'm not allergic to hazelnuts. I can eat hazelnuts. I still have one or more of these if you want it. <laughs> and I also have gummies if anybody wants them. The and the peanut oil didn't give them. <laughs> One of these days, I'll actually bring paper dice. Make mm -hmm. a right or left. Did you bring your paper dice? Mm -hmm. Paper dice? Paper, paper dice. dice. That's sexy, right? Well, right. oh, please tell me you saw the thing that I found. Yeah, I did. There's no the description on it. It has them. They're, They're tiny. Tiny, tiny. Uh huh. Callista has tiny, tiny. You should see them. They're adorable. What's that? The tiny there's, dice. They're smaller, oh, yeah. than, they're even smaller than me. Here's my eight sided. Yeah. I tried to read those Here's your eraser. <laughs> right, she okay. likes pocket watches, and I found a pocket watch that literally has the dice at them. Yep. Do you need a pencil that has an eraser on it? I have a watch. What are you looking for? Uh, no, you can use it easy. just for the eraser. Oh, nice Did you finish your first one already? No, but it's not this full. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I want my friend. I just love this though. If you're having some really shitty dice tonight, drop them in the pooper. Yep, drop yeah. them in the pooper. <laughs> I've thrown dice on, off the table before. <laughs> Yes, I've seen it. <laughs> I've thrown dice in the lake before. Yeah. He's thrown other people's dice too. <laughs> That's fair. Uh. Now, these, as much as uh, these dice both fail and reward me, I am kind of loyal to my dice. I say, what colors are you going for today? Color? They're all mixed. Yes. <laughs> They're all mixed. But they, these are my mixed dice of. Thing, like these are dice that I have either pulled from packs of dice or found in random places. I was gonna say it's like I know two of those are definitely from Magic the Gathering. <laughs> I had no problems and I laid down on my for yeah, an know. hour just face down. Oh, I know. Literally like I a just box full me, of man. dice and I just took it. Gotta and stay that was hydrated. before I ever played D and D. I'm like these are weird dice. I like them and I just picked like one of everything that was in there. I just love the set that I found at Comic Con. It was just all like, it comes with more than six dice. I need this. <laughs> and then she pulled out this little glass tube that was also a dice, and I went, I need that. And she goes, Well, do it together then. <laughs> oh, sexy time, huh? Turn the lights down. Mm -hmm. Light a candle. <laughs> Shuts the door. <laughs> <laughs> the candle so, catches on fire. We all burn. There's only one thing. exit. <laughs> Where the Let's stems. Watch. Keep failing, There's no so I went windows. Back to and no, no doors! <laughs> 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 
So now I have my gillies again, and I just use those. Those will never fail you, though. Maybe. No, they, I've had those for 15 years. Yeah, no, 20. They were like, no, they may even be longer than that because I've had them as long as I, um, been at war. So I've probably had them like 25 years now. Wow. Yeah, and I bought those before I bought my really good native earth, um, uh, boots. <laughs> My four button native arts. Five button. Oh my goodness, where's this? She's probably trying to find something to eat. Yeah, she, so that, her, she was on. It's like she, you guys are going to survive yeah. on graham crackers. <laughs> it's, it's game time. She just walks away and goes oh. down to the restaurant to get something. <laughs> oh no, she had to pee. Uh huh, that's her, that's her excuse. That's her excuse. She's like, yeah, I'll be at four hamburgers. I'll argue. Like, oh, you know how dangerous it would be if you were to put something like that next door to them? It's like, they have that ice uh, cream kind of place. Yeah, yeah. Down the... It's like weird, though. Yeah. It's not quite ice cream. Okay, so what am I supposed to be doing? Okay, well, prepare to yes, be made. Yes, folks, that is the huh. common D&D reference I hear all the time. Oh, so, what am I supposed to be doing? doing? <laughs> how do you play this game? Is it all imagination or is it mechanics? So, did yes. you show all the papers and the playlist? Mostly it's sniffles and, oh, yeah. and old people being Whatever. terrible. You can kind of like <laughs> spells and things like that. You can start looking. You know what? Them. I miss war, dude. I can't wait till October. GWW, baby, we're going big. That's gonna be fun. Lean your big old head back. No. Please. All right. Thank you. Much bad. Fine. <laughs> Yeah, I'd rather you slouch. It's going dead. to be awesome. <laughs> it is going to be awesome, the war. Yeah, I can't wait. Hopefully we'll get good. I heard they had good weather last year, right? Didn't they have good weather oh, last year? Oh, it was year? beautiful weather last like year. Like the best October weather uh, in like a decade? Yeah, it ain't going to be that way this time. Don't jinx it. When it's 107 in Napa Valley. <laughs> yeah. Trying to remember. Especially oh, you still were trying something different than being in the... Oh, no, no, the lake had about, like, the so it was really deceptive what because... Are we, are we not bringing the pavilion? It, we're it was to use 107, the... and you going? this beautiful lake. It's like very... I think we're bringing... And you get down to the edge of the lake, and it's Anybody got, like, who wants 15 a pavilion, feet of nasty which is not scum. So that's the massage pavilion. Not like. the big one. No, no we're... No, we're, no, 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 we're, no, we're, no, we're like, because, number one, we don't have enough bodies to put it up. I want to jump in the lake easy. So we're bringing the basket... or the basket pavilion the mm -hmm. one for selling baskets and mm -hmm. you know all the other stuff we'll set it we'll do a two table setup and then i'll, I'll oh, cook out of the rv okay and keep you guys fed and hydrated out of the the whole you know the whole point of this go was to make it as least work of setting up okay. and actually kind of partially enjoy it while you know working at the same time yeah. the problem i have when the whole yeah. crew goes probably very few contribute to the idea of the business but yeah, or like bringing food or yeah or then it's stuff. it's like this 200 square foot kitchen that has to be built mm -hmm. 10 pavilions have to be put up mm -hmm. the giant pavilion has to be put up it, it, it's a nightmare yeah, yeah it takes a lot to right down yeah. there because i went to the other war 96 because i went to the other war and i went on the vacation 96? i don't know if i'll have yeah, right down there for me please the one yeah. war you needed to go to yeah. Yeah, she works retail, man. It's tough. Yeah, Pachero, man. I, wanna... I get more time off than some people, though. I'll go to Great Western before I go yeah, to Pachero. Yeah, I still gotta again. get someone to cover oh. my Monday. Great for... Western, you got grass. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, the trials, all weeds and all ants. It was, actually, it was actually really lovely, though. Ants. It was weird yeah. not having everybody there, but it was a lovely weather. Hey, yeah. huh? What's magic for him? It's up to them if they want to have magic. It's good. You want magic too? So the magic schools are kind of broken down into. Oh, hi, everybody. Um, we have two new players. We're waiting on Callista. It's going to be a bit of a different event tonight. We're going to be introducing the new players, getting their new characters. And. Yeah, Mono, I'll turn down the music a bit. Yeah. What did you say, Jason? You would talk over you. Um, There's a mosh pit over the corner. <laughs> All right, I got my Nirvana shirt on. Thank you very much. Um. So we're doing things differently. <laughs> when I originally put the idea of this game together, I wanted to get rid of levels, that I wanted to get rid of classes, subclasses, and have the players just write their story. Write whatever they want to play. And as they move through the world, 
the world kind of helps them define what they want to pick, what they want to choose, what they want to develop in. Um, are there advantageous conditions to lineage yeah. and how you develop? Yeah. Sure, depending on how the game moves uh -oh. along. So, the schools of magic are pretty simplistic. God. There's pantheon magic, right, which is god-level magic, you know, magic related to the influences of the gods. Um, there's arcane magic, and of course, there's shamanistic magic. Now, if you decide to go the shamanistic path, you could also go what's called wild magic path as well. Mm -hmm. But I use a custom table in wild magic. It's a D100 table, and one is catastrophic, and the hunt was amazing. And then there's variations in between of the outcomes of what happens. Now, will your skin turn blue and your hair fall out? That's always a possibility if you go wild magic. But in some cases, like, amazing things happen from wild magic. The problem with my wild magic table is it's never predictable. It's a random table constantly. Does it change every time somebody changes rolls? every time. See, I kind of like that. So, you know, that's the other kind thing of my own do, character is I'm, I like being random. We did dip our toe back into a little bit of old yeah. school magic management. Mm -hmm. So obviously you it's can have a spell nothing, focus right? if you want to. You have your spell book. Um, however, we treat spells a little bit uniquely. Um, in the sense I don't know if that it has voice, but you might learn when it has voice. You learn your spells for the day, and then you got to learn them again for the next day. But you don't get spell slots. You just get a number of spells that you know. And spells don't care about level. If you try to do a powerful spell that you're not very or very good at casting, it could have a negative it, impact. Voice? It, may, it may not work properly. Um, so, for example, let's say you learn Fireball, you learn Thorn, uh, thorn Whip, you learn um, Ice Blade, and you learn Knock. Let's say you learn those four things. That's all you know for the day. There's no uh, traditional level attribution to it. So when you know Fireball, it has a base value associated to what it can and can't do. But if it's dispelled or it doesn't, it, for some reason, the wild magic effect is you don't execute it, then it's lost and you have to regain it by resting in the evening and restudying your spell book. Mm -hmm. So some of the more traditional idea, but the nice thing is based on how you use that spell influences the potential damage it causes. So you may decide that you may look at me and go, Hey, I want to cast fireball, but I want to cast it at a level. I'm not used to casting. I want to just put all of, I'm, I want to put all my hate into it and just make that fireball just erupt. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, okay, well give me, you know, give me intelligence save. Let's say you roll an 18. Great. Goes off. Give me 12 D6. Fireball damage. Or you can just say, I'm going to cast a regular fireball. No save. Give me 66. Fire, you know, fire damage. So you don't always necessarily not know the damage. Like when you learn a spell, you'll mm -hmm. take the base value of the spell level from the content of the book. But your spells don't level up by themselves. You're getting more powerful and arcane, and therefore your spell and you kind of join the journey together. But that means you got to practice, you got to learn new spells. You can make your own spell up if you want to, okay. right? Let's say you go to an academy and you spend the day studying with a wizard or someone who knows a certain spell. We'll do some rolls and you know role play it out, and maybe after a couple days of doing that, you might learn a new spell. Maybe you do some study on certain things and you learn a spell that you've been wanting to custom do. Tribal orcs. Tribal orcs are amazing in this world. All kind of orcs exist. Whether you're a half orc, full orc, or whatever you decide to go with. Um, your resiliency still matters, so you can still bake that into your character type. If you go shamanistic, you can go totem. You can create your own totem. And you can borrow from a barbarian totem if you want to. You know, Totem of the Eagle, um, maybe your clan elk or your clan T-Rex. Maybe you want to just kind of create this unique clan that represents your orc. And then the table will help you decide on your skill set, your base set. And you can start off very base, And that's why I built the game this way. So that when new people get added, you don't automatically feel kind of restricted because, number one, you're a new player. 
but you're level restricted, right? It's not really fair for you to come in in a level game and say, okay, everybody else has been playing for 20 sessions. I jump in at their same level. Mm -hmm. So by getting rid of levels, they're all managing their own way that they're developing their characters. Mm -hmm. But it makes it a lot easier for new players to write their story, Mm -hmm. come up with a few things that would define who they are up to that point, and then get you launched into it right away. And in this game, the hit points are front-loaded, which makes it more kind of forgiving when you run into difficult challenges. I also don't have to worry about encounter balance because I kind of built this algorithm that helps me do that. And because I front-loaded all the characters with good hit point values, I don't have to worry about you guys getting wiped out unless you are really, really dumb, <laughs> which can happen. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You can also or, some or, or roll. You become... Yeah, no, recorded. like you haven't been... Exactly. <laughs> like, if you, if you have, like, really like bad, like, you slide. know, random number generator rolls, like to me, the me. dice and how you play are the great equilibrium of this type of game. Okay. We use uh, the, the core DC Jeez, yeah. system. So in 5e, they developed a system called the difficulty check system. So whenever you're in a situation or circumstance, as I narrate out, and you're narrating back the response to me, I'm applying a difficulty check. So I might look at you, Carla, and go, all right, Scarlett, give me a acrobatics check. And let's say you have a plus four in your acrobatics, you'll roll a d20. And let's say you roll a 19. In my mind, I know the DC was a 12, but it's a scaled DC. So if you just blow out the DC, you learn more because you did so well in your roll. If you just barely make the roll, you'll learn something. If you fail the roll, you'll learn probably not that much. If you completely zero out the roll, (laughs) you learn absolutely nothing, right? So it's a scaled effect of of a bell curve on their DC system. Everything I do is homebrew, however. What is that? Where'd those come from? Oh, God, those probably been... Are they bricks yet? They've been there, like, what, 12 years? <laughs> expiration date yeah. is... She had a bag... Hey, expiration date is... She had a bag of animal cookies in there, like the, the circus oh, one. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Roll for diarrhea. <laughs> With the DC on that, it's going to be a 19. Oh. <laughs> Roll for diarrhea. I dare you. 19. No diarrhea. I can absorb everything. Yeah, you, well, oh, yeah. yeah Your intestinal nice. lining is like wood. It <laughs> <laughs> you like a lizard. I did eat a wizard. That's why 2022. I mean, uh, December of 2022. So you're good. You're good. It's food. Oh, thank you. Oh, December of 2022? Just in time. (laughs) Of course, I'll check the markings later. She probably wrote over them. They probably said December 2012, and she changed the one to the two. (laughs) (laughs) Just tastes like dust, like dusty granola. (laughs) <laughs> it's just not right. It turns to powder in your mouth. Mm. That would actually be kind of fun. Like the love we feel for I each other. I think they have candy like that. The sweet tarts. You do. Just, <laughs> you so the whole adventure part, the, the, the way this game runs now in 5e, it's much more narrative. Mechanics still matter, but they're not really the center focus like they used to be. The player narrative has become center stage. The way you guys decide to be as a group, your narrative style, the way you decide to interact with each other through role play. If you want to use vice voices, I don't care. You can use voices. I do it all the time because it helps me disseminate between different points of NPCs and and content and stuff like that. No, sugar. Oh, what's wrong? Sugar, sugar. Sugar-free. Can't have sugar? I was sugar-free, so I went to the doctor today. No more sugar. Uh, (laughs) Raise the roof. I will get something. Where's our son, honey? My mom left. And took him? Yeah. Oh, wow. Is he topped off? Are you going to be okay? Honestly, this is the first time my mom drove off. With the baby. Wow. Oh. Are you going to be okay? <laughs> 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 Separation anxiety? Yeah. Okay. Are you the clamped? 
question for Glenn. What are you, a Jewish house frau? <laughs> Today, Jerry's a Jewish house frau. Yeah. Hey, Jerry's craving. I'm spitzing over here. <laughs> I'm spitzing. I'm spitzing over here. All right. My yeah. arms pits. Jerry, same old Jerry. So obviously, we'll use things like armor class, hit points. We got rid of proficiency. Oh, God, God. So there's no more proficiency. If you decide to be really good in a skill set, have you have advantage. I can't have a magic Which means you roll two d20. You take the higher of the two rolls. Can do that one. And then you calculate your math against that. Um, I'm not a fan of proficiency. I never liked this calculation. It never made a lot of sense to me. Um, so I felt like, as a character, you should be able to decide for yourself the skill sets that matter to your story. Right? Like, why be proficient in stealth if you never use it? Right? So the idea here is as you evolve and develop your character, you identify the skills that matter to you. In game, you can say, like, hey, I want to go try to find a dojo and go practice and get better at, uh, Get better at uh, some kind of martial unarmed combat. Just Therefore, yeah. anything related to that could possibly be affected by that training. Mm -hmm. Your decks may go up. You know, you, your unarmed combat may get better. Um, maybe you can wear armor a little bit more efficiently because you've strengthened yourself. So, we're probably um, gonna have to so change armor, a equipment. A lot of things. What's we're, that? We're going to have to change a lot of things because those that's are written fine. up in D&D &D Beyond. Yeah, that's fine. Which takes into account the proficiency bonus. Oh, and I whatnot, know. Which we don't I know. Have. It's no big deal. Currently. At the, at this point, it's really easy. You just minus four from the number, and you're good. Mm -hmm. So, because I think, well, you guys plugged your numbers in as level one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you're fine. The proficiency's probably a no. Two. I put it at I put it at four. Oh, at four, yeah. so it's probably a two. No, it should say at the top of the character sheet. Yeah, I'm looking. At level four, I think it goes up to three. Does it? Yes. Either a three or a two. No idea. What am I looking at? Oh, it's a two. Yeah. On Mars. That's what yeah. I thought. Just three. Three. So whatever they roll, minus a two, if they have proficiency. Okay. And all we do is we, if you have proficiency, you have advantage. But you're not locked into it. Proficiency is the dot. Okay. Seriously, Bella? I'm sneezing, you're hiccuping. No. My God. But I only... Let me go get some antibacterial spray for all of this nonsense. <laughs> and I'm sniffing. Well, that's because you just did a line of coke, so I'm okay with that. All I've got is one hiccup, though. You have that's some? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm ready to play! 24 <laughs> hours straight of D&D! It's literally a line of carbonated soda. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, she does play the 1980s yeah. um, Greyhawk, uh, new, Greyhawk Greyhawk Vice. Vice. New yeah. Vice, yeah. This is where we need pixie sticks. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I didn't do that in junior now. high, and you can't make it do it now. No, no but I, I still want to. We just started watching Not Breaking snip. Bad, too. Oh, <laughs> That's I, an awesome. My mom tied a, a bowl of uh, sea sticks like with salad with it on uh, I mean, oh, yeah. bear call salt. Bear call salt. Or salt, yeah. 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 Keep calling them salad. I don't know why. It's like a. Better call salad. Well, Italians are more acceptable than salt. <laughs> <laughs> and I was eating, I was watching TV and I just kept on going okay. about thinking. I ate so, with that in mind. I'm like nuts. What is Scarlet's story? <laughs> what do you feel like is Scarlet's story? Um, basically, it's, <laughs> I've, I've wandered. Well, first of all, really... what's your lineage? What do you think your lineage is? I am a uh, half elf, half human. Okay. And I like that about it because a lot of people assume half elf is half elf and half human. But that's <laughs> not always the case. I mean, there's half elf, half orc. There's, um, but... there's gelp. I don't know. Well, dwell. The There's gelp. Dwell. You sure those help? eggs and the little squiggly things are all going to work every time? Oh, every time in the magical world? In the magical world? Yeah. Fuck okay. yeah. All right. Half dragon. No, no. Half, half dragon, half orc. I'm, that, the, 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 I'm, I'm searching for a memory stick. All my dragons. Half gelatin. Half gelatin. You can't even see the stick. I'm sorry. A whole new term to the. The term I, I was, I was, I was <laughs> injured as a child half, that made me lose my memory. memory. Yeah. No, half what? Halfling. Halfling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. That would be, be so much fun. Around. Do you want to I think my okay, okay, probably not in reality. All right, so let's hear Scarlet's story. What is Scarlet? Jones. Um, Jones. Oh, yeah. Jones. Half Jones. Half Jones. Half Jones. Half Jones. Half because I was not no, accepted by it. either race. Okay. I was basically, you know, right. raised in the right street. Um, I have a, I have a scar 
on my forehead. From Would you where... say you were raised in the streets of a major city or yes. a minor community? Major, because I, that's where okay. I learned to become a thief. Okay. And mm. that's how I learned to survive. Everywhere's okay. Um, and uh, uh, are they dry? I was They're wet, so yeah. your nose doesn't dry out, homie. Oh, all right, I guess I'll try. They're covered in lanolin and then my, baby mucus. Then my I, all I remember is that my family like baby was spot. attacked <laughs> when I was a kid. No. Yeah. Um, so I have no memory except small images of my family. Okay. So, and I'm I'm in I'm in search of a memory stone to help me remember my family. Ooh, I like that. I'm a fan. Oh, I still think so. that could be happening. Like six hours. Yeah. Oh, Maybe so, Where did you hear about the memory stone that sent you on your quest? In a tavern. In a tavern. <laughs> Everybody hears things okay. in tavern. It could be a lie. Would, do you feel like your character is aged or still naive and young? <laughs> still pretty naive and young. She's, okay. she's, um, she's already made a reputation for herself. Would you say your reputation drove you drove you out of that city? Yes. Okay. Um, because I leave a very defining mark. Ooh, a, 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 because I only I only go after really bad people or those really good people. <laughs> yeah, or or are those who fine. really really deserve it. <laughs> In her in her mind, don't use so your powers for she's a homicidal man. Unless it's really really cool. Her favorite targets are Karens. Oh. <laughs> Pretty much. So, but yeah. Your know. life started in the slums of Nicodranus, a place called the Skew. A real shithole. It's Sorry for everybody said that there. the idea <laughs> that the trade of goods comes first, the trade of the naive souls comes second. And the skew is where you go to make that trade, either into permanent bondage of your relationship with whoever becomes your caretaker. But it's definitely not Romanesque in sense that you could earn your way out, or Nordic in sense that you can earn your way out. You either buy your way out, or you kill your way out. I think I probably would have killed my way out because I have a thing about being controlled. I have an image of Scarlet in the third bedroom of an estate. Puddles of blood lie under each door. You're hovering over who's been your master for some 25 years. He has two grins. One on his face and one across his neck. <laughs> you manage to pilfer an amount of wealth that not only gets you out of the skew, but you decide staying in Nicodronus and making your name there is probably not the best thing to do. But you can take what you learned and you travel areas of the Wildmont that give you the idea of what you want to become. Okay. You try, you fail, try again. And with each failure, you get better. For a while, you're hired out, doing low caliber activity. Um, minor extortions, breaking and entering, making sure that certain guilds are free to operate while others are immediately run out of town. But you did this at a level of community level as opposed to city level. As you branched out, your skills got better. You even begin to gain a cadre of followers and you've taken on people who have suffered a similar past similar to yours indentured servitude extortionists people that have suffered at the hands of the wealthy Those who've been allowed so yeah who've been allowed to live narcissistic lifestyles through those they keep in their care this has gravitated you towards the idea that wealth may not make you automatically bad, but it definitely means you're suspicious. You've always carried that chip on your shoulder and you wear your poverty on purpose to hide the value of your power and your wealth that you keep hidden. Use your power and your wealth to 
bring people to your side and to your influence. There's an area in Wildmont called the Morrow Valley. The Dundalian Empire is both an empire of excess and exploitation. And it's brought you there. You've resided in the Mudtop Ward for a few years now. You've built your name here. The slums of the northern district of the city known as the Mudtop Ward. And you found yourself in collusion with an organization that calls itself the Myriad and the Thunder Shroud. The Myriad is a unaligned, clandestine organization that practices high-level criminal activity with the intent of never having anyone at the helm. So therefore, no one could ever be sought out. No one could ever be convicted of leading. It's just this group of cells that agree to operate without a leader. There hasn't been a leader in some time. The last leader went by the name of the gentleman. But he went missing some time ago, um, probably post-divergent of 300 plus years after the, or 200 plus years after the failed reign of, or the attempted ascension of Vecna. But in Rexingtrum and in the Mudtop Ward is where you establish your name. Unfortunately, you had a falling out with both organizations. Gathered up your wealth and you gathered up what you had including an orc you've met recently in the last five years. He goes by the name of Marrow. He's always been that trusted, reliable psychopath that you could bring with you. But with a sense of holistic duty and accomplishment of his tribal background. He's the one that brings you the information about an old pre-calamity city goes by the name of Vasselheim. They recently had finished a bridge construction across a massive gorge known as the Devil's Grid. This has opened up a huge unexplored territory that's been isolated for over 250 years since the destructive attempt of Vecna to ascend. And this has created some opportunities, some challenges, and some problems. But it definitely affords you the best option for maybe finding a new place to establish your name and your reputation. If there's anything that can be said about refugees, settlers, and the religious folk, they're easy marks. They're also easy marks for really Sir. bad people, which offers you two opportunities. Not only the chance to make a pretty decent living at your practice, but the exploitation of the wealthy is something that draws you to Vasselheim. As you and Maro aboard the airship out of Rexingtrum and head for the ancient city of Vasselheim. There you've heard of a Templar, a paladin, who's looking for specialized skills as she is beginning to form a new Don Marshall cadre around a goddess that goes by the name of Saren Ray. But this cleric or paladin has a reputation. She used to serve with a group called Vox Machnia, a both notorious and infamous as well as legendary group. She is said to be the last known survivor and she is about to retire as a Don Marshall. But before she does, she wants to keep and maintain her promise to the people that she has given her oath and her word to. Pike's Watch is an organization designed specifically to allow that promise to be kept. And it's that promise that attracts you to her. Her background of helping the poor, her background of helping the needy, taking a ruined area of the Vasselheim city creating its own dedication to a goddess and then using that power not for her own personal wealth or influence but to become a guiding light to those that have suffered catastrophe after catastrophe with the intent of keeping the promise of never happening letting it happen again whether she's full of shit or real you're not sure yet but the opportunity to meet with her brought you and marrow to vasselheim Rumor has it, 
she is traveling south to meet up with a group of people that hail from a guild called the Azure Hammer. They have accomplished some interesting tasks that have kind of put her in her radar of interest. Even now, she treks south to meet up with them. You and Mero arrive in Vasselheim. You discover the direction that she's headed. And before long, you begin to follow in search of where she might be. And that's where your story is currently. You're free to add to it, take away from it. To me, that feels like Scarlet's story. That's what brought her to this point. Morrow, what do you think your story is? Where do you think Morrow comes from? Or Marrow, sorry, it's a long A. Marrow, not a short A. Uh, Marrow's a veteran soldier who roughed up uh, one of his captains really bad and now I'm no longer in the military service. Um, probably raised a little more with the humans and with the orcs, so not as touch in touch with my heritage but you know i still hear the dreams from time to time and i'm you know not quite sure what to make of them because you know i grew up more with my human mother than with my father's uh lineage um pretty big you know bigger than the average uh person I, i'm six ten, like 320 so i'm like a uh, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking you know. about your size, and I'm like, oh snap! Jerry's gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta probe this one. <laughs> Not for long, though. So I'm like, I love that you have the back, you know, so military uh, back. Do you consider yourself tribal or domesticated? Uh, probably more domesticated just because that's the way i was would you be made. aware of your tribal heritage that i'm not so sure yeah. oh i like yeah. the fact yeah. you don't know that's searching, a playground for me searching to find out <laughs> you know maybe how my other half yeah lives, you know, yeah kind of give me a, a good idea of how to get in touch you know maybe even more with uh, nature and stuff with that like that kind of what brought us together to the searching of our yeah ancestors. but his story started before you I feel like your story starts in a very old continent, but not quite as old as Isra. You come from the desert. You come from the high desert of Marquette. The great, rough, rocky plateaus where once you served in the Drusar military, the challenge you had was their officers were idiots. And on the eve of an invasion battle into a town for all you cared didn't deserve what was about to happen to it you had had enough you took your sergeant aside expressed your concern and then the captain came over and in a partial feral rage that you have no idea where it came from deep down inside a small spark for some reason lit that day. As you stared down at the broken neck of the captain, the shattered skull of the sergeant, you found your way back to Drusar. You discarded your wares, your items of military. You hunkered down in the more noble regions of Drusar, took on bodyguard work. Use it as an opportunity to not only learn human manipulation, but also this thing that they covet, wealth. And what wealth brings people in the human world. People treated you with an exotic kind of exception. This also afforded you access to the Drusarian Colosseum, the great underground fighting pit, where you fought and honed your skill for well over a year. At some point, that ember that lit out on the frontier drew you to Wildmont. It drew you there because you had heard rumors of a location called Darktoe, a pirate island where anyone could live any way they want as long as you live to the code. And that's where you begin to hone your orc code 
and the understanding of the human obsession of wealth. And what defined you once as the idea of being a soldier, it's the soldier skill that brought you to the very center of what you think you want to become. And after a year on pirate ships of many different interesting pirates, probably the most interesting one was run by a mouse folk captain. He was the 105th generation of a captain called Tobias. Although this captain found himself believing that he was still the original Tobias, regardless of the fact that mouse folk only live on average about 20 years. But very much like Prince's Bride style, it was generational mouse folk being passed this title. And this was the title that they were, regardless of the fact it was a new mouse folk every 20 years. But his, <laughs> but his insanity, his proclivity towards violence and reaction taught you a rare skill that most people Ever. rarely learn. Ever. And every single generation, Balance. they add to the title. The idea <laughs> to hone skill and to be dangerous is one thing, <laughs> but to profit from it seemed like a better idea. This caused you to leave Darktoe with all this information and knowledge, the one thing still lingering in your mind. Where did this spark come from? Why did it set me afire that day? Why was I so angry? There's always been an object that you've held on to with no memory. It's just something you've always had. This totem has always just inspired you. And as you walked through the great... Rexentrum Mosaic Ward and the Tangles, and admiring exotic and amazing individuals from all across Exandria. You dropped your totem by mistake, and then a half elf picked it up and handed it to you. Her name was Scarlet. You were struck, and from that point on, the two of you stuck together as you helped her earn her reputation. But then those rumors of who you once were, maybe where you came from. For some reason, this city, Vasselheim, sounds familiar to you. You don't know why. The ember brightens in you slightly. The energy of adventure. And you managed to convince this Scarlet to travel with you. Two of you board an airship. Scarlet seems to have her own understanding of why she's going. It doesn't matter much to you. You'll protect her. You'll be with her. And you'll do what's necessary to make this happen. <laughs> Eventually, two of you are on the long road, the Vasselheim Road, out into the Great Plains. The, the woods pass by. Days of travel go by. And as you come over a great hill down into a great valley, you see the banner of Pike's Keepers, Pike's Watchers, down in the valley. Great pavilions set up, great groups of different guilds and organizations in tow. Whether to maybe plead for her understanding or her recognition, I'm not entirely sure. But by the time you get there, it's evening. The two of you approach the pavilion gates you see well you see four individuals standing there preparing to enter into this pavilion and it's more of like kind of like there's a wooden border or gate or, or fencing that's been set up around the pavilions all of the pikes watchers and pikes keepers and the pike arcane um banners are kind of all over the place. The Great Pavilion is obviously the main structure. But these four individuals strike you a bit as one of them appears to be Tabaxi. There's a great snow leopard at her side. Another one is so strange you can barely maintain your focus. <laughs> one is a very bald kind of vanilla looking halfling with this kind of stoic, kind of non-responsive expression on their face. And you've heard of dwarfs 
Although you've always assumed that they were a thing of fiction, you suspect the other one might look like that. So as the two of you stare at these four, who are about 100 feet in front of you waiting for their turn to enter, there's another series of groups in front of you, and there's people lined up behind you. As these two look, Jade, what do you look like to them? What do they see? They see you standing in line. I am a snow leopard, tabaxi, along with my snow leopard next to me that's on four feet. Um, I am wearing studded leather. I am, have a shield and a long bow and a long sword. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Did you recently acquire a belt? Oh yeah, I recently required, acquired a belt. So I have a belt with um, several pouches. She's on. very strappy. That's how you know she's a main character. Two pouches. <laughs> right? I got a belt with two pouches. <laughs> and Willa, when their eyes come upon you, what do they see? Other than complete fucking weird. <laughs> At first, I probably look normal. And then you realize that's not normal. You look a um, little closer. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like the uncanny valley, where you're kind of looking at a doll, but then there's something even weirder about that. <laughs> For like, you think you saw eyes, but those eyes aren't moving. It's like where did they go. Yeah, it's like it's like it, it's they're not always there, but at the moment she's got. It looks like grandmother willow eyes, <laughs> like like petals. Okay. Her eyes, they're like pink. Um, do you have an aura? I'm sure everybody has an aura. Right? Not necessarily. Do I have an aura? Of the dead wizard? I would say your organic nature would give off a shamanistic aura, perhaps. Yeah, it, it... Or a fae like aura. I feel like a tree. <laughs> it's like... That would my, my, my half, my elf side is attracted to you. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a tree. Standing alongside this strange-looking person, you see a short, little, bald halfling. And when I mean bald, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, no beard, no hair. No oh. hair. Alopecia. <laughs> I summon Will Smith. Never <laughs> take damage. Automatic hit. Unarmed. Save half damage. damage. He, he only wants to punch rocks. Yeah. What do they see otherwise <laughs> when you're standing there, waiting to gain entrance into the pavilion? Um, he pretty much stands. He doesn't fidget. He stands pretty stock still, and he's got like little, you know, <laughs> what you would consider like atypical like halfling wear, like a little vest, a little coat, little half pants. <laughs> You're not wearing the Drugar um, armor. The, the, the armor no. no, no, no. You get no, no. that after you got it destroyed there. <laughs> um, his no, feet, no, no hair. Yeah, he's got bald halfling feet. I have bald halfling feet, which are really disgustingly ugly. <laughs> um, that the hair covers a lot up. So um, so yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, he's got a little backpack. From there, you cast your eyes on a dwarf for the first time. Woo! What do they see, and what do you look like, Bella, when they see you? So I have raven black hair. I am kind of as stock as a dwarf, but I'm more taller with longer ears. Um, I have a uh, two weapons on my back and a shield. Okay. You can see my 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 lovely warhammer that I call whack a mole. Um. Yeah, but yeah, pretty much I'm, I'm a fairly tall dwarf with long ears. The four of them gain entrance. Eventually the line moves until the two of you stand in front of these guards. One of them looks down. Your purpose of audience, who are you here to see? Here's the pipe. Oh, she's, she's taking audience. Where do you hail from? Do you want to tell me? Nicodronus? Nicodronus, you come a far away. You're not part of them refugee rabble, are you? No, not at all. Yeah. Well, you two look like, well, you look fine. What's your business? Haven't seen orcs here in a long time. I'm, uh... Well, that makes sense. Well, enjoy the meal. 
and they kind of usher you through the gate and they start their interview process. You watch as you come in through the pavilion. These four are already seated at one of the, the major dining tables. You guys kind of take a seat near them. Um, not exactly right next to them, but kind of across from them. Some horns blow, introductions are made, and a very regal, but clearly elderly halfling, wearing very, very unique looking plate mail armor, designed and clearly custom fit to her. She doesn't bear a weapon or a shield. She simply walks in with a retinue of paladins that kind of spread out amongst the place. She comes over to the table, sits down, and begins to address the table. More interestingly, she's addressing the four individuals. They seem to have a conversation for a bit. She leans back in her chair. And well, when we last left off, her remark was, let me tell you a very interesting tale. About something that happened a long time ago. And a promise I was going to keep, no matter what happened to my family and friends. She casually looks over to where the two of you are sitting, almost to acknowledge your presence, but not necessarily being over-specific about it. She definitely seems to have an interest in the four that you haven't officially met yet. There are other people now lingering, standing in kind of like two, three person deep, kind of like that half circle storytelling that happens when someone of very prominent age and experience begins to tell a story. There was a time in my youth, I drank, I fucked, and I fought, but I did. I met a Goliath. And together, we made an interesting pair. We traveled. We went to Craghammer. We went all over Caldor. And the adventures and the opportunities together. I watched friends die and I watched loved ones fall in love. We had an opportunity as a companion, a fellowship, a group we called ourselves Vox Machnia. Which, to be honest, to this day I don't quite know what it means. But it doesn't matter. We agreed to it. It's the moniker that we carried. Through trials and tribulations, cities and empires rise and fall. But family and friends are forever. One by one, as age or battle took my friends. Although I don't know what took my husband. Probably curiosity. As him and my friend Grog disappeared... Well, it disappeared into a place called the Astral Plane and were never seen again. I was kind of okay with that, considering the 18 children I had to take care of. <laughs> it was perfectly fine. I believe Scanlan would call it planting and scattering one seed in the wind. Although on occasion he would be jerking, out, jerking off outside of a window. He might have met that too, I don't know. You could hear giggles and laughter. Probably people have heard this story, but probably told in different ways, you know, because her long white silver hair and her wrinkled, but kind of like taut kind of halfling features still, or gnomish features still kind of holding true to her identity of who she, she was. Her Saren Ray emblem proudly displayed on her plate mail, but a bit of her memory takes her back. So she doesn't quite notice that she leans back in her chair puts her feet up on the table and is kind of like eating a pork shank and drinking from a tankard of ale while telling this story. She, from memory, finds her slipping back. And for the next hour, it's a story about friends, losses, and it all culminates in the greatest story ever told. When a great lich lord that went by the name of Vecna nearly destroyed Exandria, nearly brought an ancient city into existence, destroying the proud city, nearly destroying the proud city of Vasselheim, and therefore starting a new dark age period of chaos, corruption, and rampant death across Exandria. 
possibly even giving a chaos god a foothold in the material plane, allowing them to pursue their ventures out into the astral sea. Who knows what he would have done had he been able to accomplish that. But you know, through a strange twist of fate, something happened. We nearly had him ourselves, but we were quite spent. And this fucking asshole by the name of Archon, the dragonborn that we had befriended numerous times, showed up, helped us. We had it defeated. He cut off Vecna's hand, stole it, and disappeared into the ether. To this day, we don't know what happened to him or what he did with it. For all I know, he took it as a gift to Kesis, or the Queen of Dragons, whatever your preference is to calling her. But I digress. It was at that point, as I became a Dion Marshal, that I had the opportunity to rebuild the great house of Sanre and create an area within Vasselheim dedicated to her teachings. I had made the decision to keep my promise to my friends. I will never, ever, as long as I can, whether I live or die, allow such a situation to happen again. As she stands up and begins to look at the four that she was talking to before, and then looks upon the entire audience that's gathered. So it's with a heavy heart, as well as a gleeful heart, I will say this much. At the end of this season, I will be retiring. I am thin like paper now. I lived a long time and me and myself and Alora are finally going to cross over together we are going to go and try and find Scanlan and Grog and see where that adventure takes us but before I leave we'll establish an organization called Pike's Watch the purpose of this organization is to make sure that not only Vasselheim kingdom of Othanzia never stray from the path of intended purpose of righteousness and the quality of caretakers that are designed to see to it that we flourish as a people. To be Othanzian, to be Marquisian, to be from Wildmont or to be Taldorian is irrelevant in a world trying to kill you. On a regular basis. For we are Exandrians. This is our home. This is where we're from. That is the purpose of Pike's Watch. The purpose. <coughs> she coughs a little bit. The purpose of this watch. It's a good part of that march. Is to make sure. This never happens again. So with that. I invite all prominent members of the different guild houses, well wishers, prominent of skill and character, kind of eyes, Morrow, the strange look, an equal strange look to Willa. Species is not important. Grit and firmness of hand, and the intellectual wit to know when you're beaten to come back another day understand so let the festivities continue <laughs> enjoy the rest of the evening enjoy the food drink to your heart's content for tomorrow morning we will decide the fate of this organization we'll decide and she looks down at the other gnome next to her the gem, uh, who goes by the name gem cutter who kind of stands up well <laughs> No matter what happens, dear Pike, I can assure you, the Azure Hammer will do its best to contribute to whatever your needs are. We have kept the Heaven's Stairs abated. We have kept the great Earth Titan harvested for the greater wealth of Vasselheim. We will always continue to support the Saren Ray. We will begin that support with the Pike's Watch. <coughs> I know you said to wait till tomorrow, but I would eagerly like to offer up our best group that we can. I look around. <laughs> <laughs> Jay. Jerry. Bella. 
and Willa, please stand and make yourselves known. No. <laughs> Pike just stares. Oh, come on. Kind of half smile. We stand up. We, we actually yeah, you guys all stand up and bow. <laughs> So, she just kind of giggles a bit, and you just hear her under her breath, oh, Scandal would love this. And Jem kind of looks around and sits down and nods. There's applause and great roars of kind of like both laughter and cheering. Well, I'm spent. It's been a long evening and a long travel. We'll speak again in the morning. So you can find more of your number this evening to conversation with us but enjoy the evening and she gets up the retinue of paladins kind of guide her out of the space that's when the bardic music kicks in <laughs> the staff favorite. begin to filter into <laughs> the pavilion food trays drinks are being brought out what would you guys like to do i love have five cane of dexterity <laughs> You do what? No, no, no. Pike. She's got a plus five cane of dexterity. I said, gotta have <laughs> I said plus five walker. <laughs> she's she's like, pretty old. Walk. I mean, she's... She her and Laura like, have... She's been drinking like no problem a minute ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she'll pay for it later. Oh, she'll old. definitely pay for it later. Well, I don't think she's got a walker. I think she's got a plus five cane of dexterity. Secretly, it was prune juice in there. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she didn't have a bag of holding or it'd be stolen already. I have not... Nick, a bag of holding from him. <laughs> yeah. I might have. Give her a moment. She'll find one. Did she give us any advice already... about Trendo? No. Because we told her the whole story. Oh, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. But she didn't feel like that was a good venue for the discussion. Yeah, we have to talk to her about that in, in private, not surrounded by dozens of people. I start to follow her. Closer to all these people. <laughs> there's quite an audience here. I mean, there's a lot of uh, people are representing different guilds. Your current guild master is here as well, the gem cutter. Um, Do I see that one that's after me? Uh, give me a perception check as you look around the room. Okay. Gem cutter is our the guild master. I'm sure I wrote that down at one point. Well, we'll see because it's like since you from the library. Probably. <laughs> oh, you would. Well, I mean, do you know he's looking? Yeah. Full, full, full I mean, it's he, this is kind of Jerry's paranoia kicking in. That's true. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. I like what she said about living to fight another day. And he's, he's got a pay. Yeah, I mean, looking around, Eight, 18. your eyes kind of rest on an interesting looking orc and half elf individual that's like seated nearby. But other than that, you don't Jeez, necessarily um, see. Are they paying extra special attention to me? No, I okay. think they're just kind of drinking, eating, and casually admiring the group. Okay. I pursue them and peruse the room. Right? It's like everybody getting ready to like, are they like celebrating or something? Yeah, there, there's people just standing around. It, it's it's going to be a horrible compare, but it's closest I can give you. If you ever go to the SCA and you go to one of the Orange County parties, yeah, it's just a bunch of people. Like a yeah, it's a revel. I mean, just people standing around talking business, talking politics, talking wealth, talking drunkenness, talking just a general celebration. Can I spice things up? Can you? Sorry. <laughs> 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 you don't always seem to be the life of the party, my dear. All right, go ahead. I'm going to get up and start dancing. And when I oh, spin, yeah. I want to have uh, flowers oh. and leaves just... <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Really? Um, give me a That's performance. That's why my allergies are actually do that. I have no charisma, by the way. <laughs> yeah, she, she thinks she's the most, like, charisma person. It's nice. Nice? Nice? <laughs> instead of flowers you do your gas she's not <laughs> well it's an interesting dance really i mean she's doing okay but her timing is weird like she goes to flurry flowers out while people are talking to each other and they're like choking on flowers um she goes to do this like bizarre ballet style dance where leaves are fluttering and it's like landing in the soup or it's landing in the pasta it's landing in the baked salmon and people are like looking at their food and then she's dancing around <laughs> it's just it's it's she is doing great in her own mind as far as you can tell and then she bumps into him oh that'd be awesome come dance well, with me <laughs> i'm gonna 
I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna follow after her after she's done that for about twenty show minutes. No, I don't think I'd let it go on for today. <laughs> <laughs> but the room would be filled with flowers. I don't think I'd let it go on for today. Yeah, minutes. that would be Maybe a bit about excess. Eight. Eight. <laughs> I'm gonna say eight minutes. Okay. I'm gonna go talk to the big guy. No, no. Oh, okay. And, and, and I need he's... some protection. And, and with and with that in mind, when Jerry looks over to see you, Morrow, describe your like your true physical. Like when people see you, what do they see? The physical idea of Morrow. Morrow. I have kind of a gray green mottled skin. Uh, lots of scars on my arms, particularly my knuckles. You know. Bit of, uh, Are they scars or just pure calluses? Uh, like a bit of both, like just scars of, uh, that have calloused over. Yeah. The, yeah. The scars from like, you know, and I would say you would have acquired that during your time in Dark Toe, working on the ships. Yeah. yeah. Rough, rough hands. Uh, Any tattoos yet? I think I've got the tattoos yet. Okay. Uh, property of Jerry. Which <laughs> you can give me a history check as you take notice of that. Okay. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. So I'm uh, trailing uh, after history. Willa, trying to just a regular guy. rein her in. Ah, okay. And I grab her hand and I start spinning her around with me. <laughs> <laughs> after all the chaos, I'm just grabbing a drink. <laughs> Only got I'm eleven. Eleven? Yeah. I just like I'll probably the, the only thing that feels like... unique about it is lack of tattoos. It's the first time you've ever heard of a orc not having tattoos. Normally, they wear their story there. So either right. he doesn't have a story to tell, right, or he was raised in an environment where he had no idea that that's what the tattoos were for. Okay. So like Aaron and Kyman have tattoos then. No idea what you just said. So oh, Aaron, our our, our half work. Uh, Karen oh Aaron, yeah, yeah. Kyman, the one who was yeah. riding our car. I just heard glor 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 glor. I thought that was a. There. A new, a new I mean, with all the flowers in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm like, well, let's go sit down. I, I I don't, I'll, 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 I'll go up to him. And this, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I'm I mean, I don't even know if you'll like see him. He might have to like stronger. go like this because he's so tall. <laughs> but if there's a if the, there's something that I can get at Timmy, get on a him. get on a table to be able to. Yeah, I would say there's. You know, I would say at this point, the two of you are kind of trying to mingle and just get to know what's going on. But you notice that these two just are inseparable. Right. Like they are always together. Okay. But you watch as the big orc is like standing next to an empty chair, mm -hmm. which would give you that little extra okay. two feet that you would I'll, need I'll, if you I'll, stood up on I'll it. I'll get up on it. Okay. Can I Hello. Would you like some animal <laughs> protein or perhaps some fermented green drink? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like a haunch of meat and like a, a beer. Yeah. And you're just looking right down, way down there. I immediately uh, take a bite of the meat and then I crack the end of the uh, the bone and start sucking out the marrow. Okay. Of course. That's of course. why it's called marrow. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jerry. Nice to meet you, Jerry. I'm Marrow. Good to meet you too, Marrow. Um, where's your story? Where's your tattoos? Most of your kind have tattoos that tell a story of your of your life. Uh, I don't have any uh, tattoos because I was raised by my mother, my, my human mother, and so I'm not in touch with my other side, my other hmm. half. Well, I've observed that you have callous knuckles and many, many scars on your body, and that means you're probably someone who survived traumatic experiences like combat? Uh, I've been my fair share of soldiering. Perfect. How would you like to be my bodyguard? This is where I draw my dagger and say, are you attempting to take my bodyguard? Please, spin Jade right into the middle. <laughs> please, please, please. <laughs> I would say as you two are spitting around and you're drinking from a... I bet you don't sleep around you him. Can see, <laughs> like, you can see, and then at some point I'd say... What's your passive perception? Um, Should I throw shade? a different way for perception? No, no, because you're you're not moving. 12. You're just watching I'm drinking. Things. I'm just yeah. enjoying <laughs> everything. 12? It might be high. I, I would guess it could be just enough to see it happen. 
Jerry's standing on a chair having a conversation with a very large orc. Uh -huh. And there's quite a stunning looking half elf with a dagger out saying something to him. I'm nope. gonna look at Willa and nope. say, Willa, Jerry needs our help. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a slight puff of flowers out of the backside of Willa as he walks that direction. Um, well, he could say no to me. Uh, yeah. He, well, how about both of you? So when Jerry sees you do that, what do you look like to him? Like, what is your current physical look I'm, that he would see? I'm very tall and willowy. I'm six foot. I've got, you know, bright red hair. Um, I have scars across my face and scars across my, my throat. Uh, and I'm very, very tan. But I blend in very easily with it, the, my environment around. Give me an intimidation roll. Roll a twenty. Was advantage right? Because she's, she's no. Okay. Just no. Just give me an intimidation yeah. roll. Roll d twenty. Well, shouldn't she be proficient in seven? It? Seven. Okay. Wait. 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 Oh. Wait. 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 Hold on. Oh. Uh, We've taught you well. Now you pass the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for you said for for intimidation. Intimidation, so intimidation right here. So plus plus three. Plus three. So it's so ten. ten. Jerry, it's interesting. Uh huh. These two cut the polar opposite of a physical right. look of you and your friends. Mm -hmm. She's still really you cool. might as well be suburbanites compared to these two. These two look rough and ready. Right. That's why I like them. Fair point. <coughs> Maybe you need two bodyguards. That's right. So what do you say? Because you have what, no you have to, what do you have to offer? Because you three are having this conversation. These two wander over, and this one wanders over, kind of sipping out of the air. That blow because I was like, I'll just, I'll just sleep with the cat. Be like, don't sleep right next to them. You might not wake up in the right position. <laughs> <laughs> sleep with tape over your asshole. <laughs> Hey man, don't give away my secrets. Come on, man. Because I haven't got behind him to see if I could even reach yet. <laughs> um, and I would say you don't even need an inside check. While the others look kind of what you'd expect in these far flung lands, Jerry is an oddball. Like, there's oddness about him the way he there, talks. There should be no way he's able to even be alive in this environment like <laughs> yeah you're looking at like <laughs> how is like a this little guy in the wilderness and survived even a day <laughs> it's like a little baby mouse in a forge right <laughs> <laughs> right it's like a lamb in a lion's which den. is kind of intriguing that's where i kind of notice how his friends are still and you see sweat you see beads of sweat when you pulled your dagger out uh, and he kind of he's he, he kind of gets a little bit of like a, a little shake and Even though you didn't do a very good intimidation, he doesn't do very good at not being fearful. So. <laughs> and, and Jade said that Jerry needed help. So as I'm approaching, I'm like approaching like a, a like just like like ready to you know, yeah, and, and like the the uncanny doll face is starting to crack, and like the the bark is starting to show like on my skin and stuff. <laughs> um, I feel you coming up behind me. That's you my own. behind you. <laughs> So you can see it's coming. Um, okay. <laughs> well, what I can offer you is uh, eighty percent boredom of travel, uh, and twenty percent sheer terror as some unknown monster attacks us, <laughs> or um, Go ahead, certain Jerry. individuals that are trying to acquire me, and I do not want to be acquired by those certain individuals. We uh, or... we do tend to fall into a lot of wealth, uh, and uh, you know like the the metals that you use for to trade things, and uh, <laughs> when do we get there? And we even find magic mm -hmm. items. When do we get there as he's talking? I would say you get there as he's talking. Like right, right. now, I mean, you you approach. You can see Belladonna's like nearby, kind of listening in, and the six of you are kind of informally around each other. But Jerry's kind of leading the conversation at this point. Anyway, he seems Jerry, to be trying to convince these two tell to me like... about the man who is trying to come after you. Well, 
I don't want to give away too much. To hold me. I don't want to stay but up anymore. It's an organization that's after me. That drunk already? Yes. After the war. I'm intrigued. <laughs> mm, yeah, and so I need some help. And I mean, look at this specimen. She's I mean, a jaguar. Yeah. No. <laughs> you're very quick with the blade, but that's some intimidation right there I can use. I love this cat. It's so warm. I try it, but it doesn't work for me. Not very intimidating. Not very um, this one is just, well, we have try to help her. You perhaps need the assistance of a thief. Hmm. Someone who's quiet. Someone who can obtain things that we need to obtain surreptitiously. Yes. Well, then we come together. That's perfect. Don't sleep so, in the same tent. That's well, where he's, 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 I've got that covered. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> trees are the, uh, trees are the best. I like you sleep well. in the tree. I sleep in the trees. It's <laughs> like absorbing a corpse. Well, one day you'll need it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever asked about that, have I? Well, oh, no. When, when, oh, I just think you're a friendly tree. I think I think what? You, you blocked that from your mind. Yeah. Well, Because you're just safe. Is there another ring pop? There is. There's lots of ring pops. Well, one day you're going to leave your conch at home and you're going to need my help with healing. She left your conch at home. Oh, and... you left your conch at home? <laughs> I forgot where I got oh, She forgot conch. Today is God's in a different purple form. That's it all. is a godless world. <laughs> so, you might need the benefits of my medical attention. Oh, I'm sorry. What do they call him here? Physicians. Cleric. Oh, my clerical abilities. Why are you asking me? <laughs> I'm just asking because I don't know what they would call it. Because in this form, that is God. Priest, no. yeah. <laughs> Physicians. And you won't have any of your <laughs> spells. <laughs> you won't have any of your spells. And you might need my healing ability. And I can do, do extra healing ability if I am able to probe you. No. Are you talking to Belladonna? Or... Yeah. It's not like he's commenting. <laughs> you say this to our new friends? I say it in front of them. Uh -huh. Like, probing? Uh, well, uh, it's just a small sample of your essence that I take and I'm able to better, tell that better to heal people. Tell all the people. corpses I had to bury after you took off their pants. That was only one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she's just, the, she's uh, cadavers don't guy. count. Just a little Is this scarred. This magic item that you are searching for, the rubber gloves. <laughs> <laughs> now I have my wand, Proby. <laughs> now the wand doesn't look anything like, if you've ever seen a wand, it doesn't look anything like a wand. It's chrome. It's tubular. It's about this long. It it has Dude, I think a, I a few have, lights on it. I think I have something we could make that probe with. Probe with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we just may have. Could you put it in the dishwasher first? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely finishing. <laughs> I wonder if they sell sonic screwdrivers. Um, no, it's only about yeah. as big around as your pen. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's why. That's why. I anyway. have sonic screwdrivers that make sounds. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's your choice, though. I mean. Self. It's in my bubble box. That makes yeah. sense. So tell me about your companions. Oh, um. I'm Jade. That's Jade. This is Ivory. I'm Bella. I Hi. Oh, Ivory. Oh, she... I'm sorry. She introduces non sentient pets. Not in your sleep, no. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> You're awake. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, Nothing my creepy about that. You put that sword away. Oh god. Or the dagger. Dagger. Oh. <laughs> I'm just my, my dagger stays in my hand what, until what, I, I what, until I get to know you better. What, what, Even at a party? Even at a party. What, just staring at my drink, remembering. Willow the likes to I fight. Them, and I was so just she like, loves to. Oh, spar. She likes to spar. No so fighting at the party. Well. You'll get some good sparring in. That's all she likes to do, apparently. <laughs> And play later. No fighting at the party. <laughs> he does my fighting for me. 
So lads and lasses, I notice you the links are getting empty. Is that gem cutter? Could, could it, no. Oh. What the <laughs> fuck is that gem cutter? Some kind of jewelry smith, maybe. I was asking you, not him. Oh, I don't know who the fuck you are. Anyways, <laughs> do you need drinks? I'm going yeah. up to the bar. Yes, please. Yes, what please. would you like? Whatever's on tap. Honor. On tap. I don't know what that means. In the spigot that comes out ale. of the... Ale. Oh, ale okay. I'll Hala. bring you please. some ale. Thank you. Well, uh, I'll take mead. You want some mead? I can grab I'll you some H2, of that. I mean, well, water. I don't know what the fuck that even is. Water? You don't know what water, water is? is? Uh, no. Not at the fucking party. What is what comes out of your little willy when you're done drinking beer? Can I get you a beer? I look down because I don't have any. <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, big green gray skin deal. What can I get you? You want some of that good orc grog? I can bring you some of that. You got the look of a pirate about you. No, we'll be fine. Oh, jeez, all these doily wearing pants. <laughs> ah, a good broad shouldered tall. Well, Guelph. <laughs> sure, whatever you call it. What can I bring you? You're the strongest thing I can get. <laughs> ah, some dwarf ale, yeah, I'll bring you some of that. Me and my friend's gonna wait you your some of that, thank you very much. You know, fight in a park's party. <laughs> Give me my drink back. Save yourselves. Uh, who's the better thief? The dwarf kind of wanders away <laughs> back towards many. the bar. We're not going to engage in fisticuffs. <laughs> Dork just laughs as he walks away from that. <laughs> Fisty cuffs. Yeah. I'll be sure to tell me, daughter, that's what you said. Fisty cuffs. Okay. <laughs> that's not until higher level. <laughs> it's not until it's a few more advances. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No. You're making these. You're making these <laughs> individuals uncomfortable. Sort of talking. Travel about. with anyone. There's a tent, and then like a glowy light that goes dark, and then goes back yeah. goes dark, and all you see through the tent is dark. Light. Clap on. Dark Clap light. on. Silhouette. <laughs> uh, yeah. I sense something suspicious about the drinks that you bring. A few minutes later, he brings them back. Well, what do you mean suspicious? What? Yeah. There's something not quite right about those drinks. What, did that free? <laughs> Why would you bring us free drinks? Well, me and my, well. Do I, I know don't... you? No, what would you like to know? <laughs> I say, well, and judging by the <laughs> amount of scars on your face. They're already hired. <laughs> out, out of character. To hire what? them. Out of character, what is he? Um, he's... Maybe about four feet tall, is almost four feet wide. His dwarf, dwarf square. beard goes past his knees, and you could see like skulls kind of woven into him. And he's wearing like really high end plate mail, like just this. It's blackened plate mail, but it's so shiny, it's kind of bright. Um, he does have a large guild emblem around his neck. Which guild? Um, it looks like a hammer on a forge. Um, give me history check. See if you recognize the guild. It's Hammer Forge. The Hammer Forge guild. We would know our own guild. You would know the name. Dwilf. At least. Uh, 11. 11? No, I'm sorry, 12. 12? They're the coin strikers. Coin strikers? Yeah. Yep. They're a money changer guild. They handle... Blue beer for you. Nope. Tax collection. This is the real estate they handle <laughs> making sure that businesses are in the proper way within the kingdom of Thanzia. They're not an overly large guild because they're very specialized. Um, this is a feeling of maybe an ask. Like somebody who might need a little help. <coughs> but I couldn't help but overhear what you and your friends were speaking to each other. You two sound a bit tried and tested. We've seen you might do well to have a collar and a leash on and be kept in front of the papaya place. But I let you choose your own fate, I guess. Mm. I like but the, uh, the reputation of the snow leopard comes to mind. Oh, I was kidding. talking to some <laughs> individuals of the Ajahama. A name was dropped by that daft gnome over there, Jemkata. 
He said something about, well, I'm already losing them to the Cerne. I might as well loan them to you for a couple of days as well. See if you can find them some work before they leave my employ, my contract. They're not going to resign, so you're not resigning with the Azure Hammer. Fall it out, or they just simply cast you aside. We, we have another opportunity. Oh, you do, do you? It's an opportunity, then. It's a pay well. Are you guaranteed good food, good travel? We're still working things out. Uh, what are you not offering? A shite liar. Well, I've got a town. Not too far from here. It hasn't paid its tax in a month. Our collectors haven't returned. I've sent a couple messengers. They haven't come back either. They're most all likely dead. Well, maybe. Or they got the money and ran off with it. That's a possibility, too. We haven't had that happen for some time. But you lot would go and uh, floor it for me. Check it out. I can get garner you 10% of the binding fees. How much, or how far away is the town? 10% <coughs> of what? 10% of what they were supposed to collect. How much, how much were, they were they supposed, supposed to collect? collect? Uh, 126,000 gold. 126,000? 100. 15% You don't better. speak dwarf there, do you, lass? 15% sounds better. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. All I hear is termites. Speak to the tree. And... Oh, okay. All I could hear was termites. And... 126,000? 15% sounds better. Uh, give me persuasion. You were a dwarf, correct? I don't like time I checked. 16. Say it. 18. I do, you know, you speak under your, your, your breath in a few certain words, but not realizing that I actually speak dwarvish. I would say intermittently some of what he's saying to himself. I really hope they take this gig. And I also say you hear him. This is like the third group I've sent with no word yet. People who understand And that you would understand it as well, being a dwarf. Hear him say a joke under his breath and just laugh about it. Hey. <laughs> Mm. Don't be so fucking sneaky. <laughs> we both started snickering. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't do that, don't you? Speak the dwarf language that I do. Well. Don't you know? What'd you get? Uh, 18. 18? Mm -hmm. 15 you say. What guarantees are you going to give me that you're not just going to run off with the will? Pay us when we get back? Hey, that seems sane, yeah. That's usually how it works. You'd be surprised how often it doesn't work that way. We well, like to think it does, but it doesn't always. How about this? You pay uh, a thousand to each of these individuals now, and then the rest you of the You want the bloody this fee and 15%. Yeah. Give me another persuasion check. <laughs> not good at persuasion. <laughs> oh, a 19. Oh, look! Not a 21. I got a 21. Hey. <laughs> Very well. 14%. And a thousand gold fight this fee. I gotta at least cover my costs for the evening. Not gonna be the only ones I sent. Very well. Well, oh, save your money. We're very good at what we do. <laughs> well, he looks at Will, who's like eating a stick. <laughs> 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 but, like, dry I, I'll take your word for it that you think you're good at what you do. But I, uh, Just trying to save you some money. Yeah. Uh, he kind of pulls the messenger back off his shoulders and hands it over to you. All the information, map, name of the people that have gone I'll missing, and everything's in there. And the money? <laughs> look at it with my non and, and the money, too? <laughs> Just love your face. And the money is there, too? It. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, there is um, no uh, 600 plaques. Okay. Okay. No, it's like you're a photographer. I'm like, oh, so God, that's... Okay. You're exciting on okay. the skin of your people. So I give you a thousand... Gold, uh, uh, platinum pieces. That'd be uh, uh -huh. hundred platinum yeah. pieces and hundred platinum pieces. Okay. 
So everybody gets 100 so platinum. Are you That's retained? The finder's fee. Is that you now have a map okay. of the town, and you have some basic information about it as well. Do you want me to write down the the money? Yeah, yeah. we got a total of six thousand, but a thousand went to. Okay, so we get four thousand. My new bodyguards. <laughs> So we, um, uh, the name our... of the town is called Glass Barrow. Here we go. Glass Barrow. Glass Barrow. It resides Glass two America. days' journey from where you currently are, due, uh, due uh, east, in the very kind of like upper <laughs> portions of the Tundra Highlands. Oh, <laughs> All right. My name. Of the Shit. Tundra. Um, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, Haldi. Isn't that a bad word here? Uh, my name is Haldi Stonefoot. Haldi Stonefoot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you think I'd know my own daft bugger name, but sometimes I do. <laughs> you my migrant before coming back. Aye, <laughs> dwarven, dwarven ale is notoriously strong. Turns teeth blue, too. That's all that is. Perhaps you've imbibed too many I just fermented you grain drinks. Blue teethling cock. You said it was east of uh, something tundra. Ooh, burn! <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was a dwarf on dwarf crime. You know, self-deprecating. Yeah, you know, dwarves are strange beasties, man. But you said I'm gonna write that one down. The center of the tundra highlands. Two days do. Don't forget to uh, write that in blue ink. From where you oh, currently are. Do, do, do you bite off his penis as soon as you wrap it? Yes. <laughs> Chew it like gum. What, 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 what uh, kind of penis was it? It was a uh, tiefling. Oh, tiefling. Uh, uh, we're in Vasselheim? No, no, we're not. Mm-hmm. We're, we're on the. Edge of the I'm, I'm trying to learn some new burns. Yeah, you're you are half a day's journey north of Winchleach. You were starting your main journey. Who names we were, these um, we were really Your day's the, journey north we really because you came in right? in the evening. So we were pretty close to the forest, weren't we? You're about halfway there. Yeah. You're halfway there. Yeah. Halfway there being another three or four days travel okay. to go north, up into the Timberlands. Mm-hmm. Was there anyone in your guys' group you guys needed to meet? Yeah. No, we have to get our um, wagon from um, Aaron. Okay. That's it. I also wanted to go visit family. Well, you still have to get paid for your contracts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Because I um, in the beginning before no. we... No. No, because you're supposed to finish your contract work, then after your six month rotation, meet up with the Azure Hammer, where you either renew your contract, you take the season off, um, and you get paid for your work. So. And he was from which guild? Uh, Handy Stonefoot. Haldy Stonefoot. Stonefoot. Handy Stonefoot. Handy Stonefoot. Handy Stonefoot. <laughs> my my. Okay. My, apparently the my. Um, spell spell, check, your spell checker spell thing. Spell checker oh. decided Haldy was That's... Handy. <laughs> He's very handy. You said it went with which, which coin guild? strikers. Coin strikers. They are a money skill, money mm-hmm. exchange guild. Yeah, I'm slowly writing down all the organizations we come across, dead or alive. Is uh, it because the leaves are in your eyes? No. <laughs> um. I'm looking into your soul. So, so uh, I'm going to yeah. <laughs> so instead of like using, uh my mouth i'll just use my mind to talk to these two so no one else can hear okay okay um, i'll let them react the way they choose to okay. yeah in your head you hear my voice i look at you and in your head you hear there's a guild after me they want to dissect me you actually know the name of that guild now and that's the the raven's guild raven's guild the golden raven's guild yeah golden raven's so there's a Golden Ravens Guild, made up mostly, I think, of magic users or alchemists or whatever they call them here. Uh, keep an eye out for their symbol, the the raven with the sun behind it. Um, and any any people that look like yourselves, they hire people to try to kill me or capture. I actually capture me. You're gonna tell the people who you just paid that people are after you. You haven't told us. He's doing this telepathically. I'm I know. Telepathic. Uh, I'm just saying. He's like, well, they look mean and scary. They because look way more like provocative than you guys do. 
You guys yeah. are like soft, like like little he's gonna make them stuff. shit their pants. Yeah, it's like, and especially like, after that run in at the academy where the yeah. two of you just kind of booked it out of there. He's gonna stab yeah. them before they know what happened. I learned that he was invisible. He knows how to go invisible too. He did mine. He booked it. I mean, give me a con save. You're a dwarf. I mean, you're not a lightweight. No. And actually, by doing so, you no. you made you know my decision to join your quest even more so because. Ravenfield falls also after me. Oh, oh goody. Perfect. Now, can Jerry... 19? I'm strong. You're good. Very... Yeah, yeah, you're good. There you can't be that many out Party here. buzz going, but you're good. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear thoughts as well as project them or just project them? You haven't learned that skill yet. You know it's coming. At oh. some point, as you f okay. like finely tune your ability to project your thoughts, right. you're working on... You've always wanted to be able to use that skill to kind of read other people's surface thoughts right. and eventually get kind of. I can do a that. little bit of that, but it's not like I have to use it as a psi ability to right. do that. Okay. A little bit of the Stranger Things nosebleed sometimes if you're right. careful. <laughs> like when I do my uh, intellect dice overcharge. Yes. Yeah, I know. So for the 6,000, do each of us want to take 100 flat? Correct. Okay. Always gotta dole out the monies. Yep. Go to be equal it before they go and get killed by the giants. The All great right. snow giants of the Tundra Plains. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> well, it's gonna kill us. Appreciate it. Just, uh, when you're done doing what you're doing and you, you find me, Silk. Just, uh, look, I'm not gonna lie. Bring me the heads or bring me them in chain. Don't care. Wants our money back. Whoever is like responsible. So, uh, well, if they are thieves, some bring monsters. Them back. You want some piece of them? Oh, you're, you're you're reading more into this than there is. This is a civilized portion of the Othanzian kingdom. There's no rounding monsters out here. No Six creatures. hours away from here, we encountered a 200 or 300 foot worm that attacked us. Oh, there was a story. Story told by drunk. I was there. Sure you were. Sure. That'll be fine, lad. I can prove it. Bend over slightly. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the dwarf. The dwarf oh, thinks he's lying know. about the worms. I was there too. Yeah, I don't really know what the fuck you are, so I can't even really. It, it was a giant ass worm. Well, giant. I very, hope you meet one. Very big Not worm. So that you very, can believe very it. Very big worm. But I can see you've been drinking all night, so I'll just leave it at that. I anyway, because you brought us the alcohol. I literally drink water. <laughs> no, you no, made you us drink the alcohol. Mm -hmm. What? You drank dragon piss, I assure you. Anyways, I'll be in the town of Winchley. You piss? can catch me there at our guild, at our guild hall. Down in the uh, I gotta pull up that map. I thought I had it up. Okay, this would be far more potent than any of this that they're drinking. What population center are you talking about? Uh, we are How over in the shadow. The heat. Dragon's way Where? What city? Uh, <laughs> you... Oh, god, not that place. <laughs> okay, shadow. What? Shadow oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I start talking to you in what seems like gibberish. But in reality, it's thieves camp. What you know. Yeah. You know. No, I'm telling you that you and I have a mutual understanding. Mm. I'm going through the info okay. packet that... Uh, okay. Um, yeah, you you come across a map of the town itself of Glassbarrow. Which totally um, it's, a, it's a sizable town. Um, it's... It's kind of known for its location. It's near a, another minor crossroads okay. uh, that feeds into some of the local harbors that are about a day or two east of its location. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some mining activity north of it, um, and it's completely surrounded by farming and herdsfolk. Um, most of the herdsfolk would be tundra bison. Uh, most of the mining is... Um, uh, precious gem, mineral, and iron mines. Um, and there's a sizable population there. I mean, probably around five, 6,000 people. It's probably gotten worse because of all the migration and refugees and thrill seekers that have been pouring in to this part of Othansia. So it's probably just as crowded as Winchleach is. Kind of like bustling at the seams of it. Can 
you said gem and iron or what, uh, what else was there? Um, <laughs> minerals, um, precious gems, and some iron works are there as well. It would make sense. I mean, if it's paying a monthly tax of that amount of money, there's probably a little extortion involved too. A little protection money. But business is good right now. The um, magistrate of the town is a paladin that goes by the name of Zalabeth Quatan. How do you spell that? Um, Z-A-L-E-B-Y-E-H. Z-A-L-E-B-Y... E H E H Q A H T A N. That's her last name. U A H T A N. He'll forget by next game. He'll give a different name. He will. Sure. Does it sound like some sort of finishing move? I am you <laughs> Nice to meet you. So they owe this money how often? 126,000 how often? Probably a year. Um, this was the annual tithe that was due. Annual. So they're probably collecting here. <laughs> maybe twelve to 15,000 per month. So this was the end of the season tithe that gets paid um, during the summer, beginnings of the summer season. <laughs> How does it feel to finally be the lone shark? That's right. Okay, well, let's get some sleep. Well, nope. We gotta go talk to, uh, gla, gla, glass, 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 gem cutter. Oh, that's right. Um, I would say you could see him over, um, kind of with a group of gnomes, and they seem very drunk. Gem and... drunk? Oh, yeah, he's hammered. If we get him to pay us while he's drunk, do you think he'd pay us what? No, let's talk no. to him in the morning. Do it. Do it, no, do, it, do, it, do, it do it, do it, do it, do it. Want to dance, Jeff? He probably doesn't have <laughs> the money let's, on him. Let's so. dance. I'm just like. <laughs> Gem cutters, do I love cabbage patch? <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry I don't dance, but thank you. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I come up to your kneecap. I'm really hammered right now. I've been drinking this dwarven ale. They told me to be careful, but. Up we're really good. We're really good. <laughs> so listen, you guys are okay with the fact that I offered you up to Pike, right? I mean, she's famous. She's hot. And she's fucking famous. You know that, right? It's a yeah. big deal. Yes. Like, oh, wow. Cool. Um, I don't know. Did these... you guys come with or did you guys stay at the table? No, they're right with me. They're with, yeah. He's they're standing on the other side of me. Oh, wow. Down. You're like, paid. you're really paid. big. <laughs> <laughs> just pick you like up by the head. Put yeah. One on eye shoulder. kind of drifts this direction and back. <laughs> uh, you're fucking scary, but hot too. Look at them scars. I dig scars. All I can think of with yeah. him is who yeah, run Barter Town? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be on his back on a thing and he's going to have a big cage on his head. Of, smashing uh, people. Offering us up to Pike. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Look, we, gotta, we, gotta, we still got to close out our contract. Yeah, yeah. I've got that all sorted out for you. I, I gave. Um, uh, you're the the Aaron, Aaron yeah. yeah it, whew, sorry. Um, so I gotta ask you something, Willa. Like when we took your contract, you like speak treant? Yeah, like, you speak their language. I speak to the trees. But that's not the same thing. That's not what I'm asking you. My cousin is insane, and he speaks to rocks. That doesn't mean he speaks rock. The trees <laughs> speak back. Yeah, yeah, I guess my cousin was right. Um, anyways, um, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron's got your your money. Yeah, he's got it. Um, and the Vardo's your the Vardo's yours. Take. Okay. Uh, we upscaled it a bit for you too. You left the skull, right? Well, about that. Um, Does it hover now? <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's, it's Why would it hover? hover? Well, those wheels. It means things... levitate. Oh, those wheel oh. things are just for the birds. Wheel things. So they, those are kind of important for most things to so move. You upscaled it with golf. Oh things? yeah, we made it bigger. We got you a bigger Vardo. Okay. Um, it can accommodate more people, more stuff, more cargo. Okay. Uh, we gave you. Um, <laughs> well, this is really cool. Um, we got a hold of some uh, miniature. Uh, not miniature. It's not fair. Uh, they're called uh, dwarf mammoths. We got you two dwarf mammoths to pull your pull your wagon now. Oh, cool. Are they yeah. easier to control than those? Oh, I don't know. I just think they look cool, so I bought them for you. 
I mean, do you guys realize you're working for Pike? Well, we, Pike we, Proudfoot. Uh, yeah. She is so ah, cool. Okay. How much would so, I recognize that? Would I be the surprised? Skull? I don't know. Again, again, uh, not not to be. Oh cool. yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, this really, this really creepy wizard dude, um, approached me earlier today. What was it was name? really. I I don't remember his name. So, hey. Something about that skull really kind of like he wanted it, he wanted to study it. Um, you know. Did he have trinkets in his beard? I don't you know <laughs> look, describe I'm just saying it. if you want me to sell it, I can't. Get you a good coin for it. So it's Traveling still money. there. Oh yeah, it's still there. Okay. Most of it, yeah. Most still of it. <laughs> I gave it a couple of the teeth. It had a lot of teeth. Where's this magician so, at? What the fuck is a magician? Means, You're so weird. Could you please go to my cleric and get means, eyebrows? It'd be means, so easier. He means the wizard. Oh, oh. Um, I don't know if he was a wizard. It might have okay. just been he, like. He means you, the dude that didn't wanted you just say that? Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know if he was a wizard though. He was kind of like a scribe, maybe. Okay. Like Where's a, he at now? I, I don't. I haven't seen him. He was what in camp. He look like? uh, earlier this morning. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. How many teeth did you give him? Just a couple. Of things. I'll talk to you guys in your heads and go. The that was the, the guy that was part. after me. Why well, not the big, oh, I, not the big fangs. Like a couple of the teeth, teeth near. I saw him in the last town. It said something about making a polymorph spell out of it. I don't, know. or uh, mm. or potion or something. Like that. Mm -hmm. so they never seen a wolf skull that big before. It's amazing. I turn invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? There's nobody here. I'll just. You okay? Stand next where, to him. Where'd Jerry go? Oh, Jerry wasn't Who's here. Jerry? He's been gone. Don't he knows now, like, I know I'm wrong. <laughs> but don't you be fucking with me. I know he's a weird little part. fella. He is. <laughs> and the funny part is a, a little fella is calling him a little weird fella. You know, he's a weird little. F okay. Okay. Jerry went to go check on the All right. Bardo. So we're going to go. Um, a while ago. We're, yeah, uh, we're, we're gonna go check on the Bardo and find Aaron. Well, yeah, he's got your payout. Your guys okay. are all set. Okay. Um, you belong. Don't forget to meet up with Pike in the morning. Meet up with Pike. Uh, yeah, in the come back to the pavilion for yep. breakfast. She'll yep. be here. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Been great knowing you. Thank you for everything. Oh, by the way, I need my. Uh, I need all my Azure Hammer. But I like it. I know you do, but I gotta have it back. It's gotta be accounted for. You don't work for the guild anymore. Are you really that we should for the last yeah. six months? It's okay. We can give them back. Give them back. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Did you give um um? Did you pay her out too with the bar? Oh yeah, yeah. Aaron has her. her I was her told when I was okay. giving this to me. Oh, by the way, mine. we took all your rock samples. Thank you. That's good work. I'll, I'll just put mine on. I'll just put mine on this desk. And it shows up. Yeah. Possible. Shows up on the table. <laughs> yeah. From Jerry. Oh. <laughs> like. Sits, covers his ass, like, and pulls it over. <laughs> Darn. Look, it collects all the medallions and bobs and everything. I was told that this was mine when it was given to me, and that I shouldn't lose it or give it to anybody. We're going to get new ones. Uh, that's not really what we said, but we know from, from past workings with you, well, it's it, it, you hear things in that head of yours, and you kind of re- Organize them and where it could work for you. <laughs> Good luck trying no, to get back out of character. <laughs> <laughs> what was pulling the Bardo is going to, what did you say, dwarf mammoths? They're dwarf, dwarf mammoths. mammoths. Dwarf mammoths. Okay. So they're Which has you wondering just how big this wagon is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Especially since we have two of them, that's just what. They are actually Pomeranian size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little tiny <laughs> wagon. They're, 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 like, they're like struggling <laughs> to like make it the mammoth. Bardo move. <laughs> They're very tiny, but they're super strong. Jade, Jade <laughs> releases them and turns them into her pets. Yep. Of course, as soon as he gets in the wagon, it still goes. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. Um, Little pop a wheelie. Well, I assume he's got a mount. Yes. Yeah. What would he be riding? Would he be like an elf? <laughs> uh, probably a six-legged uh, mountain goat. Mountain goat. No. That would make sense. Oh, that sounds like from a familiar campaign from I ran familiar. before. <laughs> Wait, yeah. goat, goat? Like, go, she got to eat goat. Mountain goat. No, God, not, I heard not of those like goats. Yet. She always wanted us to ride those goats. goats. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it goats. I feed it. I play with it. I want to ride it. <laughs> and she never could ride it. She could never well. get a ride at all. I can, 
And Ghost really didn't want me to. So <laughs> Will Shaw was like, let's slaughter them. They got six legs. They'll be good eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, they ended up being, you know, sheared for wool and... You know, yeah. the opportunity a, now you died have of old age after thousands of in their span on them. <laughs> what kind of ride would you have then? Anyways, I would ride a deer. Okay, deer here we go. Let's see. I'm going to see what. Well, or maybe a stag would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stag would be cool. I, 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 mine, is, mine is a stag. Okay. It was a mountain. Oh, or, not mountain. Okay. Or caribou? caribou would be. Caribou and a stag. Perfect. Okay. That works. Yeah. Would a caribou be big enough for the. Oh, yeah. They're 1,200 pound animals. I'd Absolutely. say I miss your ice raptors, but walking on a tree was nice too. <laughs> I miss the ice raptors. Slightly smaller than a moose. Okay. Bigger in the haunch, though, which is kind of good to be a riding animal. Yeah. All right. So, um. So, you guys leave the pavilion. Yeah, it doesn't ever really wrap up. Okay. People just come and go We're when gonna... they decide to. <laughs> Uh, do you guys need to gather any stuff or, you know, get your things? Mm, everything's pretty much on the on our steeds. There's a there's a, an individual that's after me, I believe, that's in this camp now. They're in the tent? No, I don't see him. He, he like, watches Jerry's looking around. Are I'm invisible still. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's a sprawling, like, encampment. There's... So we can hundreds of tents. You. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna say, Jerry, do you want to get on Ivory? I'm just gonna be like, is this the same individual okay. we saw at the library? Why you freaked out? And left me. Yes. That explains a lot. I apologize for that. All right, so uh, I, I have. Ooh, that's a big step for you. I know. I have Jerry. I, I I asked Jerry if he wants to get on Ivory, and he said yes. So. Okay. So I have to get I'm off the cat now. I'm holding that. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning on him. I, I, I decided to try to assimilate into the the meat puppets of the world here. So and... I'm, I'm going to say, Willie, you probably need to help Bella walk. <laughs> See you in a minute. Surprisingly, I am not drunk. I just don't want to be on the floor. I it might eat me. I can't believe I called Tiamat to Kesis earlier. I've been reading a lot of Dragonlance lately. <laughs> well, you know. Multiverse just, and all. Just keep her from stumbling. Just keep her You're from fine. stumbling. I, 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 I make a, a cane out of it. His name is uh, Rasmin, right? Well, that was the individual you spoke with at the academy. Yeah. Yeah, Rasmin. That's how he introduced himself to you. Rasmin. It doesn't mean that's his name. No, that's true. Especially I'm just kind of just staring at her and just thinking potion. the randomness of like the universe so we collect just, that's how she got here she's just you know all the genetics that were involved in having her here with us today yeah just kind of processing that have you probed her yet no, <laughs> no but i have someone who can hold her down now that's fair that's yeah fair. he'll be my assistant I will remember this. Anyways, we're gonna go, you know, it's for a good steam, cause. Yeah, your then, cause. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're gonna collect their steeds and then go to the okay. barn. Um, you collect find, their find stag her. and caribou and all their kit and gears on it. Um, I would there. say he wear, he saddles his caribou. Um, she rides bareback on her stag, so her stuff's just kind of draped on it. Um, and the two of them are leading. They're on leads. Well, I'd say his caribou is on lead. Hers is not. Just it's her. Yeah, it's almost like it's kind of like maybe either directly connected to her or she no, has some not ability much, not to, much. you know, <laughs> deal with it. Okay. Um, but the six of you are now walking in the direction where off down in the valley maybe only like a 10 minute walk uh, down into a clearing. You can see where all the caravans have been setting up as it seems to be just kind of like a jumping off point in between which leads and heading north. Okay. I'm looking for Aaron's Vardo. Um, takes you a few minutes, but the six of you eventually find it. Um, it's kind of what the standard one that you'd expect him to have. Um, you watch as his door flings open and he comes walking down. And he's like, <laughs> hey, 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 Aaron. hey, Hi, how's Aaron. your, uh, how's the meeting go? Oh, fuck. Yeah. 
fuck, I've never not seen a non-tattooed orc before. Aaron's half orc. So he comes over and he's just tattooed up the wazoo. Um, give me an insight check as you stare at him. Ooh. Eight. You're not sure what his story is, but everything on him is referencing glacial or ice mountain representation. He could be an ice dwarf or ice orc, or maybe he's from the Tundra orc clans. Not entirely sure because you're not really familiar with the stories, but he seems genuine. And, like, like, don't see a lot of orcs out here. Um, looks like, ah, yeah, holy shit, ain't you a sight to see. There's stories behind them scars, I bet. Jeez. Fuck yeah, there it is. So, uh, Gem Cutter gave me your payouts. You, young lady, you did well. You did real well. Some of those samples you brought back them, they weren't really expecting that. So, yeah, here you go. Hands you a backpack for your payout. Hands messenger bags to the each of you for your payouts. Um, your contract terms are... Um, 165 plat a piece. Rip off. How much we've been through? <laughs> well, there was plat. there was your contract and your own problem with getting home. That was <laughs> right. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, true, and you each have access to a residential writ. Um, you now own a Vasselheim home in the Seren Ray. Um, more like it. We in Ray Ward. house. Combined. Are you looking single at <laughs> You can take the act. <laughs> I want my own little cottage. It'd be nice. <laughs> I'll never see it. So that's true. You'll be dead. Okay. The, you'll be dead on the ice glaciers for sure. Where you else get what? 100. Uh, you got. Uh, Thank you. Uh, 252. I'm gonna slowly your bring my cottage yeah. to life, making you did the, good. The, bringing the the wood back to life. So hey, listen, you, know, old gem, <laughs> you guys must have really impressed old gem cutter, or I don't know what you did. <laughs> Um, you know, a little, you know, a little, little of this, a little of that, but, um, you've got a guy's got a new Vardo. Well, it's hardly a Vardo. Um, it's actually a decommissioned battle wagon. You know, you'll enjoy it. Um, it's over there. You've got your own campsite now. Uh, you're not really part of the caravan anymore. I was told you might be leaving, um, yeah. with Pike or doing some work for her or something. Yeah. Do you guys still get your houses if you're not part of the group anymore? Yeah, because that's part of the payout from what one yeah, it was, contract. It was a series of multiple contracts, so. And you that's how they get people yeah. to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, did your mom get home okay? Is, are they home all right? Can you check that for He's me? He's worried about his kiddo. They were at, they were at Walmart. I, I. Some I people don't make it home from Walmart. Child. I know, right? That will never change. Right, exactly. What, 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 um, what, what kind of house was it? The kind with four it's walls just a two-story residential oh. structure. Nothing fancy, nothing simple. Just a standard. Uh, and it's in the Seren Ray Ward. The new ward that was built to accommodate uh, Pike's new um, temple. So a slum. And her new Don Marshall status that she established a long time ago. They live in a ghetto. In Pike's district. In the ghetto. But at least it's not a little bit of can I ask him to deliver something for me? Why do you always talk to me that way? I'm not in the third person. I'm standing right here. I didn't know if you were going to say yes. I was kind of asking everybody else if you would answer. We've all really yes. tried to help her, but... Yeah, yeah she's cool. weird, right? Yeah. She's a weird fucker. She's cool, though. She spars really well. But she... I don't think she understands what it means. She hits as hard as she practices. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can help you with that. No, nah, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's cool. They're healing fine. They're Fix just a little right up. No, nah, it's just a little bruised. I've heard rumors about you, Jerry. I'm gonna pass. Why does everybody keep your hands to yourself, Jerry? I'm good. Okay. I was, I was offering. I know what you're offering. I've heard. You don't know anything about it. You've only heard the fears of the uneducated. Is that what you're calling? Yes. Are you, are you telling me when you stick that fucking thing up their ass, it's an education? <laughs> it's an education and fucking penetration, Jerry. He's got that issues. rhymed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a poet. I'm kind of gonna miss you, you know but I'm not sure about that. I will miss you too, A. Aaron. 
Um, is there anything else in the back half other than the payment? Um, no, just the payment. We got a bit coin. Of <laughs> dirty, dirty metal coin. Um, we, oh, we got sweaty messenger bags, right? That's what I want. <laughs> Thousands of hands have touched them. <laughs> <laughs> You like pull out your galactic credit card. Yeah, my... <laughs> so what we use on my translucent, <laughs> the best one. Biometric. Yeah, just touch it to the forehead. <laughs> Credits transfer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have. People... He always looks so angry when you talk, or you just think it. I have people. It's the pedals. People. In the city. What city? Castle Hood. Oh, okay. You are still going back? Yeah, yeah, we still gotta get this caravan back. Get it unloaded yeah, and get everybody's contracts Castle taken that's care of. That's not even a sentence. It seems that? that we will not be returning like I expected. They might wonder where I am. They you have friends in Vasselheim that might wonder where you are. <coughs> and you're the most introverted creature I've ever met. I didn't know you had friends, Willa. That's how I got here. Anyways, this may be the second weirdest conversation I've had today. I zone out. I, I, just like... I pull out three of those stone bugs and three of the wolf skulls yeah. that, that I had collected, and I hand it to them. Yeah. Can you give these to them? Uh, you got names, numbers? Yes. <laughs> residences where they reside? Well, zip code? You can find them in <laughs> the district of the. Wild Mother Love. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Green Terrace. Yeah, yeah. I know where that is. Yes. Okay. Um, you can find... The name is over here. Hora, Fen, and Dolores. Yeah, I can get... Sure, I take it there at the Wild Mother Temple, then. Well, the you'll, Green find, Terrace? you'll find Tora there, and she'll know where the others are. Oh. Are they like you, or are they normal? No, you're fucking not, Willa. Are they like you, or are they people? I remember to speak up, Willa. They are people? Oh, so they're... Normal. They're squishy. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> squishy. I'll see to it they get it. I'm gonna... Willa, you, I will. I'm, I'm gonna pull out um, that really nice backpack from the brand of the oh. wagon. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, like, so down. Very <laughs> Willis conversation. <laughs> There's some Aaron... kind of psychic interference that she sends out. It's just disturbing. It disturbs my my psychic it's, energy. It feels like your arm falling asleep. Yeah. No, my brain falling asleep. It's just it's like when you turn the TV to the you know well the old days. Yeah, when you turn the old the days TV when to... the TV had click, two click, colors. Click, yeah. Click, click. Click, click. So um that uh, branded devices wagon that we came across that was I'm telling you where this came from. Um from the Drugar mm -hmm. um event. Uh so Is I'll pull out that message. I like how she calls it an event. The yeah the, like the, the murder of millions. murder of yeah. prisoners down the mi in the, yeah, the, the warrant. The the, the, <laughs> event, event. the event that she caused that caused the death caused of that. untold innocent lives. Millions of the untold. event. <laughs> anyway, the happy event. <laughs> So I'm going to pull out that uh, message case with your guild seal. No. Our hands are drenched in blood, um, by the way. <laughs> and, ornate silver key. and I'm going to hand and uh, say uh, these were found in one of the wagons that uh. Uh, got ambushed along the way. Could you take them to Vasselheim and get them to the guild? Yeah, seal? yeah, I'll do that for you. Okay. Where'd you find? There was a, a wagon that we came across that had been ambushed by Drugar. Oh, yeah, the main... Yeah, we heard about some of those ambushes going on out there. Yeah. They weren't really messing with the size caravans we were hauling, so... No, there was... It was a small caravan. Yeah, well, rumors. Um, Did you hear about that attack of an ice worm that happened, too? Yeah, we were there, too. I'm pretty sure she yeah, had... It, it, over it, it, over it, in the gardens, the, uh, uh, the, the, the midway sure fort. It ate the ice raptors. Aw, oh, shit, I had a contract for those. I know. Sorry. I was we just about to, to ask them. you where they went because I didn't see them with your Vardo. We totally they told them when we got here. Yeah, I know, but I thought you were fucking lying to me. You know, no. that was an expensive con. I know. God damn it. I know. Excuse me. God damn it. <laughs> All right, Jerry, you look something wrong with you. So, Please, um, can I just pencil in some eyebrows? 
We just make it easier for me. You really don't need them. Maybe My. you should shave yours off. Oh, fuck no. These things are thick and wild. <laughs> it takes a while to grow back. So, um, we, we took... <laughs> that reminds me of your... Uh... Oh, what's her name? Oh, Sephora. 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 <laughs> Sephora. 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 Um, the Drugar that we're attacking. Oh, Karen. good. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm assuming maybe that got up, the, got up the line somehow. Maybe that's why they took an interest in you. Possible. That's pretty cool. You're working for Pike, huh? Well, you guys should go check out your new digs. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Did, pretty is big. The, is the, the wolf skull still? Did they move it? Yeah, uh, most of it. Look, it's been a real cool curiosity. The kids have been playing with it. It's, yeah. Look, we tried. It's mostly there. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Okay. What's mostly there? The wolf skull. Who took the rest of the wolf skull? It's All right. So we're going to. Curiosity of people, man. Uh, we're going to go. Have you seen a magician or. You know, you somebody... keep using that word like I know what the fuck it means. Somebody in robes. From that the, knows the magic, magic or looks like they know a, a magic. Yeah, I still don't understand why asking about like the it. skull the or no, wandering not really. around not our camp seen. or huh? keep an eye out. Let sure. me know if you keep see Keep both eyes while I can. It was the abandoned wagon that was checked by it's the It's not school. nice. Careful. Oh, from this too. I won't pull out the singed Duregar lock that I saved. Yeah, what is that? It was a lock. Cool. Can you pass this on to Tora? Maybe she can use it for something. Sure. Where have you been keeping that? I know she don't have pockets. <laughs> <laughs> she has pockets. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sure. You don't want to look in them. No. Nope. Fair. Fair. Just give me the fucking lock. I'll, <laughs> like, I'll add it to your pack. It smells like corpse in there. Dank and crusty. <laughs> have you ever seen those uh, pictures of trees that have grown through things? Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Fine. Oh, skull. That, that, that is a little bit of the inspiration behind Willow and her absorbing <laughs> things. <laughs> have we done five milestones yet? Hmm? We done five milestones yet? I don't know how many you've done. To be honest with you, I keep Rough. clicking them off. I just don't have my notes for milestones yeah, up no right problem. now. I'm just looking because we we're we've done four. I thought maybe five. Yeah, I maybe. should have added uh, another one to my. Uh... Well, we did a milestone without hit points well, we recently. We did it. Yeah. We raised it to. I only thought three though. We're still at three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. We're still on the three. Minutes. We had a, we just hit a major one. Yes, but we're still only three hit die. Um, don't have a note about a booklet name. No, because I thought you found like some sort of notebook or something when we were at the 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 abandoned caravan. No, it was a sealed gill. That's what I just handed over. Oh, okay. oh yeah, it was sealed with like some kind of uh, message case with message a guild seal, case. magically sealed. Yeah. What guild was it? The branded devices. Branded devices. Maybe they're here. No, uh, I don't think were, so. I no, it think. was a really small guild. Oh. Um, out of Vasselheim, according not, to my notes. Yeah, I think they're totally tinkerers like or something yeah. like that. They deal in like, uh, make like toys and gear work and things like that. Well, speaking Sadly, of toys, there were, no. Yeah. No. What? No. <laughs> no, they were taken captive no, by the Drugar. They were taken captive by the Drugar. Oh, though. you saved them then. No. 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 Oh. They were already gone by the time. I'm beginning to wonder about your so-called reputation, you guys. are. It seems like a lot of death and destruction. They're not you. going to attack anybody else mm -hmm. because we killed all the Drugar, but we were not able to res rescue the people. Oh. The caravan goes from point A to point B, and you're supposed to make sure well, that anyways, you so you had one job ready to, ready to go. Thank you got your new wagon. And Thank you. Good meeting you, buddy. Always good to see another orc out here. Don't let any of these fuckers get away with shit with you, because you're big as fuck. <laughs> and you, yeah, you kill up. <laughs> and he just kind of turns and puts on his huge duster hat and his duster leather jacket and kind of disappears into the encampments to, he can hear his voice kind of, you know, giving his special kind of knowledge. We uh, head over to the Bardo. Yep, so the you- Battle, yeah, battle you, wagon? Yeah, you skirt the edge. Um, huh? 
Do I see Missouri? Little girl? No, you don't see her. Dang, I'll have something. No more pets. <laughs> no, no more pets. <laughs> I'm gonna kidnap her on purpose. <laughs> I'm confused on purpose. Um, <laughs> you, you, she you wakes up one morning and there's like a Pinocchio her. style face in her shoulder, screaming like, "Yeah, <laughs> I woke her and I squeeze her." Oh, I do have something for her. So if I see Things that's fair the bunny died so in the early days of um the othensian expansion to the devil's grin when some of the more marauding and kind of more difficult things to deal with before they could build the bridge and get the fortress reestablished out there they've decommissioned a series of battle wagons that are no longer needed and they're actually they're roughly about 35 feet long they roll on about six axles and this one's been kind of redone slightly so all the heavy iron plating has been kind of like taken off and the walls are all kind of just like oaken and ironwood walls and there's a canopy bardo style like roof on top of it and there's these two tethered uh, uh, like um, dwarf miniature or dwarf mammoths, so they're about the size of like uh, a Clydesdale, but the width and girth of like a mammoth. How tall are they? Like, so they're like eight, like eight feet at the shoulders or something. Yeah, they're like eight to ten feet at the shoulder. Normal shoulder. So they're shorter than normal horses. No. They're eight to ten they, feet oh, okay, okay. tall at the, at the shoulder. At so their like, shoulder. Yeah, at their shoulder. <laughs> it's like, I, <laughs> I leave that up to you, sir. Can I get a sample of, <laughs> a, sample of, like, of a miniature <laughs> mastodon? Is it really about the same size as an elephant? I would say not quite as pachyderny because of their woolly fur. mammoth fur. Um, but yeah. About that and you have all the tack and equipment to connect them the wagon looks like it could carry maybe up to three four thousand pounds including passengers um, and the interior is kind of nice I mean it's got a lot of like normal living conditions inside of it uh, bunk beds again? built into it mm. three to four thousand it's a sturdy it's a sturdy wagon The mastodons are currently just tethered, eating at big piles of hay and grass um, being collected. <laughs> You're so just fucking gross, bro. Yeah, with if with my skill of animal handling, am I able to certainly try talk with them? Do you speak with animals? Mm -hmm. Animal handling no. doesn't do speaking. That's okay, animals. but I would say you could have a proclivity towards speaking with animals. You and... can speak to them like you can speak to your dog. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to go to this town? <laughs> Are you going to this town? Good day, mammoths. Okay, I just got this huge right. image of you being like this super, like, like sneaky like sneak animal. person, super suspicious oh. of everything. Oh, you come oh, across yeah. the, the mammoth and it's like, oh my god, you're adorable. <laughs> and you just completely break character. <laughs> a big floof. <laughs> Why my stag follows me? I don't have to have him on the list. But though. the campsite set up like traditional style. I mean, the campfire in the middle, all the different kind of like um, seating arrangements and other things that you can kind of you know get comfortable around the campfire. It, it you know, Aaron, true to heart. I mean, he's a pretty good taskmaster. I mean. He, you know, he's a good drover. He kept the caravan together, kept it moving, kept your guys' stuff safe. And you can see on the back of the battle wagon, facing in reverse, is the wolf skull. For the most part, intact. A few teeth missing, a few bits of bone chipped away, but nothing too horrible. Is Prime in there? Who? 
Time in. The one who's been riding, uh, driving our care. No, he wouldn't be there. He's already been moved on to another oh, wagon. Too bad. Thank we God. have given him like a, a tip or something for keeping our, our your caravan going. Oh, looking at the wolf skull, he probably got what he wanted. <laughs> Eat his face. <laughs> <laughs> we should take that to Winchreach and sell it. And don't you eat all them roufles. I should have gotten lays instead of ruffles. I love roufles. I love ruff a lays better. Oh, I know you is love there, lays. Because they're thinner? You love lots of lays. Yeah, because they're thinner. Oh, uh, no, I want to try one of those espresso cookies. The ones that are specifically designed to make your lower intestines explode. <laughs> no, they're not. No. You did. No, that's chocolate fudge. That's not espresso. Oh. It's so good. Oh, oh way, I thought you were talking about those. Yeah. Either way, they come out like fudge. That's right. Would you like to try the bark? Chocolate fudge in, chocolate no, fudge I'm out. No, I'm good with those. I have coconut. I can't eat coconut. Oh, no. It's so sad. I no, I could. You just don't want me to. No, I don't want you to. <laughs> There's a difference. That's why they hate when I eat cabbage. <laughs> My favorite thing. Oh, I love cabbage. I can eat that raw by the head. I love to make corned beef and cabbage around St. Patty's. Because they actually have the corned beef and stock easy. Mm -hmm. so get that mm. They just say we clear rooms if we try to have that. With out. a cup of coffee? Or. Yeah, it. Oh, yeah. Or. Um, a good, like, Guinness, like uh, a my notes, uh, traditional room temperature Guinness. <gasps> okay. So. Mm. How many beds are in the Bardo? Eight. Okay. And they're bunk bed style stacked so they awesome. can collapse in or collapse, be put you up. You want the big one, it just sinks. <laughs> There's one for Ivory. <laughs> All right. Ivory don't sleep in no bed. I guess you can't. Ivory's a hunter. Now she has opportunity, though. That could be Not a craven. Okay. So it's mid evening. It's not quite late yet. You guys have kind of settled in. You take a moment to see if you can handle these mastodons. Uh, give me know. animal handling as you approach them. I'm gonna do that too. Okay. Whatever. And I try to because it's like my animal domain. I'm just all like big. Can I creatures. approach this guy and see if he'll spar me? Oh no. <laughs> it's fairly dry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Five plus three. Eight. 19. 19. You watch as Scarlet goes over. The uh, the Mastodon immediately turns to the side to see her. As you decide to go check them out as well. And with Belladonna coming up from behind. Dirt 20. Yeah. <laughs> the two of you are super excited. And then you just see Scarlet Wah! get like thrown back 10 feet. As the Mastodon just whips into her with its trunk. <laughs> like, it, like it was surprised that she was there. And then kind of shimmies out of the way and moves and... You watch as Scarlet's spitting out snow and looking around as the two of you approach. <laughs> you got the left one, I got the right one. It's like, it's okay. Yep. <laughs> Gentling them. Nice, nice. That, that, nice. Aggra that aggravates him and he wants to go punch <laughs> Mammoth, mammoth. Nice mammoth. Good. Nice. It's okay. <laughs> you just get the enjoyment of just watching her go, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, don't pummel our mounts, please. <laughs> Like so what this that one means. punches it, knocks it like when a guy punches a horse. <laughs> so <laughs> they're familiar. They to feed them, pet them. Eventually, you two do such a good job of calming them down. Scarlet's able to approach them. <laughs> Are the the four horses and the goat here that were in her? Um, um, yeah, everything's here that that was yours originally, with the exception of the old Bardo. Yeah, she has well, her, still her other wagon. No, her thing. wagon. My other they wagon. were in her wagon. Yeah. But yeah. Did they? Oh, they took my wagon too. No, you still have your wagon oh, they and took your all horses. The stones out of it. <laughs> they took all your rocks. Yep. All my shiny rocks are gone. Yep. Gone. All your samples. Two yep. goats here. No, we still have one goat. That's right. Yeah. We still have one goat. One and goat. four horses. It's cold and skinny, but yeah, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we put the goat. <laughs> It just stares at Ivory. Ivory stares back. <laughs> you say, is Ivory hungry? <laughs> no, she ate a goat yesterday. Well, no, but it's like you just missed out on quite a bit. No, one of fudge cookies. No, no roufles. Roufles are for rich people. I'm not rich. 
These are the things you steal out of rich cabinets. Okay. Whoa. What? Inappropriate. Yeah. Good point. Poured a lot of roufles onto that paper. It's wizard flavor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice try, buddy. <laughs> Your sophistication is duly noted. <laughs> oh, wait. Pinky up. Pinky up. <laughs> Dwarf men. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully they won't get eaten by ice raptors. Okay, okay, wait, wait. If they do, we I'm have a we have a fire going and stuff. <laughs> what? What? He said if they do, I'm gonna take my shoe off and beat you with it. <laughs> what? I don't think so. We're in the water. The dwarf mammoths get eaten by ra- ice or not fire, fire yeah. raptors, by ice worms. Take my shoe off. Hey, you were the fuckers that let this guy be on watch who fell asleep. That's why. No, the entire time I'm beating you with a shoe, you're going to be like, physical attention. I'm going to go in like the corner I, I have a and give my report to the like progenitor race. The mammoth, is... But are you going well, to try to ride? That's right. The, 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 I'm going to go in the corner is... and give my report to the progenitor race if you want yeah, to do it. Was it the goat that you wanted to ride? Or was it the other? Sell the horses. Oh, okay. Now that we're no, here. No, we can sell the horses. Oh, okay. Because we, uh, we won't need the horses. Because we can all be in the battle wagon. Is there a way to get from the top, like the... I don't know, the driver's seat... Of the battle wagon into the battle wagon? There are two um, sets of foldable stairs that come down on the right and left side. Mm -hmm. On the rear of the wagon, there's another pull-down stair. You can walk into the double doors that lead into the back of the wagon. Okay, so, but do we have to come down off of the driver's seats and then walk around to the back door? Or You can can dip in from the driver's side as well, the drover's side, or... From the back side. Okay, that's my that tiny, itty bitty wagon to the back. <laughs> Feeling very insecure. Or we could just sell the wagon. You could sell the wagon. True. This is like a little wagon. It's just like real old. It's all like. It's got like stickers on it. <laughs> From all the all little traveling places. You. You're big and you're strong. Or at least you look like it. Bar me. <laughs> that's such a willa comment <laughs> you're big and strong or at least you look you'll, like it you'll get used to it you have a no you won't <laughs> kind of <laughs> willa is uniquely willa so she she likes wants to get roughed up huh yeah she likes to spar she's obsessed with the now i'm, I'm gonna look at marrow and i'll be like just practice don't Fight. <laughs> okay. So while the rest of you sit about discussing <laughs> plans, the, the sound way? of casual sparring turns into the eventual sounds of fighting, <laughs> to heavy breathing, to broken contusions. It's it's a nice sparring event going on in the background while the four of you are at the fire talking. <laughs> I'm in, I'm giving my report to the progenitor race. Okay. Someday I will be actually proficient in my sword, and I will be able to pull it. <laughs> progenitor race starting I mean, one eight six two point five. Planetary <laughs> research and report drone X three six nine. There is disturbance in the fabric of this space time continuum. The termination of this planet four eight one two seven point five should be postponed. In all probability, this world is on the brink of destruction. He's oh, an alien? More to follow. <laughs> He's a gray. Yeah. The first time we, we met. We don't know that. Yeah. No one knows that, though. The first time we met, I just dumped my drink and was like, nope, no more for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, does the goat look unhappy being alive? <laughs> <laughs> insight check. It looks pretty miserable. It looks pretty miserable. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you did become friends with a mammoth. Now we must understand. What I mean, if to. you kind of, you know, watched your, you know, your best buddy get carted away to be eaten by a. a How do you know it was his best buddy? They weren't like. Could have been a mated pair. They just picked two random goats. I mean, it could have been a truly polymorphed innocent human that was, you know, <laughs> sold to a herdsman. <laughs> Well, what, if that was true, when once the fighting started, wouldn't they change? No, true, true polymorph can't true. be undone. Except with a wish or another true polymorph spell. Well, okay. it was going to happen eventually. I'm going to go over to the goat. I'm going to be like, are you really a person? 
<laughs> you, you try to shake its head to nod. <laughs> I just really don't want to die. <laughs> I understand. Narnia vibes. I understand, little goat. I'm still gonna feed it to Ivory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good goat. Good, Good goat. goat. <laughs> you have sustenance. To be will be sustenance. I was gonna say, don't we still have squirrels and stuff from the? It's some honey on the way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I know I wrote down like squirrel meat and rabbit meat. Uh huh. Can I put my hand on the bardo and feel the dead wood and see if I can slowly try to bring it to life? Oh no, this is old ironwood that hasn't been alive for a long time. Came from good trees though, uh -huh. big trees. Trees um, I knew. Not from. <laughs> probably not from the younger than those trees. Timberland, mm -hmm. different region. So they don't really recognize their their source, mm -hmm. but there's no real life connection to it anymore. It's petrified wood. It's very scary. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be super creepy and show everyone that you're petting the wagon, <laughs> we all have our you know we all have our needs and our goals. Well, I just don't start humping the bardo. I'm <laughs> <laughs> naughty wood. Report. It's imminent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just see, like, when this world is exploding, he's in a capsule shooting off to the progenitor race. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> like, the only thing that's going to live off this planet. Oh, you right. have to study this one. <laughs> so we settle down for a long rest. If there's anything, nothing else to do, sure. I I still gonna if, I, uh, if I see Zuri. Oh, I Not, think you're... you haven't seen her yet. No. Okay. I want to practice. Then we just you can practice missile. your sword with them. Okay. That's what we were doing. Yeah. Remember, we were we were sparring. Oh. And then it was like a, a light. Give sparring. me a intelligence check. That's not a saving throw. That's just adding my modifier. Yep. Twenty. Add your int modifier. Int. <sighs> Uh, 17. Nice. Give me a concentration save. It's advantage. That's a pretty good high int. Concentration. That's constitution. Thirteen. Good enough. You can now summon four of these weird magical dark blank arrows. Add it to my spell list. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say you can add it to your list. It's still cantrip level, like cantrip kind of power base. Okay. You're on the edge of toying with a little bit of wild magic to get it to work, but you kind of rein it in a bit. Um, you can summon four of them. You can direct them at will. And each one will do 1d2 plus 1 damage when they strike. How good am I with my sword at this point? Yeah, you're okay. I'm You're awkward as fuck. With my spirit, but the the spirit weapon. I mm -hmm. want to keep trying to like. I want to make the dragon grow more. Like keep getting bigger. Okay. Um, give me a charisma check because you kind of use a little bit of your commune ability to talk to your god. One d four. Was there a plus? Hmm. One d four. Was there a plus? Um. One d two. One d two. Means you can only get a one or two plus what? One d two. You said a charisma check. Charisma. So I got, I got thirty points. Nice. Um, you know, size matters. So you kind of like when you get a little time to yourself as like kind of commune way. You're kind of like focusing on it, and you can give it a bit of an illusion or like illusion like haze and make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. It seems like you can control its. Spatialization, like up to about a eight foot range, you know, diameter of effect, and you're you're getting there. It's getting bigger. So I I look at the goat and I'm trying to figure out if it's a male or a female. Um, <laughs> you, I mean it's easy enough. You kind of lift up its leg and right. it, it, I know we're it's out in the wilderness, oh, but you don't male. have to go there. Yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> Wait, but we're not I even out of civilization no. yet. <laughs> I didn't know what that was about. Oh my god, so 
but help me. Well, if it had been a female goat, I might have tried to uh, milk it to maybe make it. Oh, that's yeah. what you were going to do. That's way more innocent than more. <laughs> it's more about so looking bad. after Jerry the goat so being bad, the animal yeah. that, you know, like if you guys haven't been paying attention to it, it's probably like in pain because it's just low. That's fair. Oh, if it was a female oh, goat, yeah, it would sure. be dragging in the ground. It probably <laughs> reminds me of a book I heard once. What? No. <laughs> I've told it many Why times. do they always wear tall goulashes? <laughs> <laughs> That's Hello, my cat. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they have Velcro gloves? <laughs> no, it's for sheep. Never mind. Take that back. I like how you can clarify that. <laughs> Go ahead. So anyways. Anywho. On rest. Yeah, so you guys all settle in for a long rest. I plant my roots in the ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, she sleeps out in the open. Okay. I just watch People them until they go to sleep. And she absorbs corpses. <laughs> I watch everybody till they go to sleep. That <laughs> oh, guy's creepy as fuck. I <laughs> climb her. <laughs> Do you want to set a watch? <laughs> guys, we want to set a watch. Yeah. I'll go first. You have more people than <laughs> In your tree. <laughs> I'll take the first watch. Okay. With Ivory. First watch with Ivory. Anybody else want to join her? Or... Well, I only have to sleep four hours, so I mean, I'm you kind of. Second watch? Yeah. Second watch, you're going to join I or join Jade for the first watch? Yeah. Okay. How long are the watches? Are they four hours? Eh, three and a half hours. Oh, I mean, it's a pretty way, quiet way environment. She's in the tree first, and then I'll just be like, mope, 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 mope. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It'll be time for my watch after that. Right? I'll just be like, get out! Kick you out. <laughs> but you guys aren't sure you can trust me yet. That's why I kick you out of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's fair. You, you fair. both get a switch fair. on you. Hey, play nice. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> That's totally fair. So right. who's got first watch? I got first watch with Ivory. Mm-hmm. Okay. There it goes. <laughs> what's coming to eat us so you and Belle are up chatting and kind of listening to everyone drift off it's I always creepy when um, Cherry sleeps he never really closes his eyes yeah. <laughs> they're kind of open and kind of closed it's kind of weird it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, one of, like this fish yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just go like that. Did I see that? They shudder. Did I see that? They shudder when you breathe. And then your head explodes. <laughs> you breathe through your eyes. Yeah. This is all an illusion, Voldemort. <laughs> uh, you and Bella, give me perception rolls, please. Here it goes. Perception. Uh, okay. 19. Yep. Your watch goes by pretty uneventful. Um, the occasional caravan arriving late on the trail. Um, kind of like the sounds. And you begin to realize less than like five minutes, ten minutes walk. is probably one of the most heavily fortified pavilions in this area. So there's, this is a pretty kind of obvious, like, if you come fuck with us, you're probably going to be in trouble. Um so the watch pretty much goes by without too many problems as the two of you uh nudge the the tree and well it's your turn willow wakes up I comes stay, out of her tree form uh, i stay in tree form you just, just go oh, okay now. gotcha yeah so give me a perception check and a nature check after you see these two off the bed cool uh i think i yeah i have advantage when i'm in tree form on yes, perception <laughs> Dog, you can't turn around. <laughs> Should have disadvantage. Wow, I rolled a three and a five. Awesome. Plus three, so eight. You're gonna be destroyed. I mean, right now. Well, I mean other than the fact you, watching the second one. you kind of wake up for some reason, like you were you out of focus or you're focusing on like something nature related. I mean, like, <laughs> an ant that's crawling across the cross Maybe. Roots and I didn't yeah. like it. Maybe you hear you some kids giggling. You, like you hear kids g- giggling, and you know they're crawling off the battle wagon carrying like a big tooth in their hand. And oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! Run off into the crowd. <laughs> <More kids laughs> can I like trick them? 
And I, like, you barely notice them as you came out of your stupor. And they're gone already. Right? They just run off into the Those caravan. Those kids freaking sword. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should sell that thing. Who's taking the last watch? I'll take last watch. You said you I'll... wanted me to take a nature check too, or what? Yeah, give me oh, a nature yeah. check really quick. With the big guy, he'll and make sure I don't fall asleep. Maro and uh, Scarlet will take the He's last a soldier. Watch. He don't fall asleep on watch. They're both 12s. Go figure. Uh, that's plus two. So 14. 14. Okay. Um... It's probably the closest you've been to the Timberlands in a while. Mm-hmm. The essence of it's out there. You feel a little bit of that siren's call to go home. Just a little bit. Like, just, Bye, just nice a bit. You. Kind of keeps you a little distracted. Makes sense. But eventually your watch is over and you kind of... How do you wake Maro and Maro and Scarlet? <laughs> I turn back into my normal form and they okay. fall off the tree. I was imagining it's like an extended vine comes over and taps them and then curls back. Maybe someday. Don't come out of the tree. That's they, well, That's I was in the tree. He was. He, he was. Do you fall on him? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like Marrow's like leaning against the tree, kind of getting his disease in, and there's Scarlet like up in the branches as you're on watch. Mm-hmm. Turn into your normal forms. <laughs> Scarlet wakes up. up. <laughs> and as soon as she says that, she, she goes right back into tree form. <laughs> Crawls back up there. Home. No. <laughs> the creep. Ivory and uh, Ivory Jerry and I are the only ones in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and it echoes and you snore. It's just like a cacophony of snoring. <laughs> Jerry and I don't snore, but Ivory does. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Chases rabbits in her sleep. Sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like really heavy purring. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. What? Uh, perception check, please. Two dice? Uh, one dice. Nice. Fifteen. Plus? Plus so your bonus. Bonus. Right. Twenty-three. Twenty-three? Perception. Okay. Perception. Okay. Remember that skills list is alphabetical. Yeah, that will help you. you take the, the, <laughs> the ones with the dots. You take two off, two dice. Oh, yeah. Or is it? Or do you roll two dice? Or she was. Um... She would roll two because she has advantage. Okay, yeah. But so she minuses dots... two because we don't use proficiency. I roll. We have to. We have to play with your characters for our. Yeah. Okay. So you have to. Plus yeah, if it's filled out, you get. But you rolled a natural twenty, so you pretty much rolled the highest you could get. Uh, yeah, so we three. changed how you do it. That's because okay. you know Jason wanted to do it different. So I roll a second die. Yep, mm-hmm. roll a second die. So if you get a higher roll, the same die. Same die. Oh, okay. Well, so but the other one was fifteen. Okay. You take the higher roll. So you guys are on the dawn watch, which minus kind of like the sun is coming up and. Um, nothing too exemplary happens other than the sound of all the different camps coming awake. We've all heard that before. Um, the sounds of galleys and, and kitchens kind of, kind of pounding on pots and coffee being made. You can start to smell the food in the air. Um, but the night goes by, nothing really major happens. All of you wake up, you have your long rest and you're on a new day. What do you want to do? Hunt down some kids. We'll talk to Pike. Find Pike. Find Pike. Talk to Pike. Yeah. So uh, we pack up. It's hunting. We pack Put up the bardo. So <laughs> I would imagine as you guys are kind of just packing up camp and getting prepped. Is there a way we can put that wolf skull inside the bardo? Uh, if you want. I mean, it's a big skull. Why don't I mean, we sell it to that person who wanted it? We'd have to go back to Winch. We have to go back to Winch Leech to do that. But we can do that. Was a person in Winch Leech that wanted it. No. Yeah. Je- no. no. Well, there was a person in Winch Leech. Yeah, that wanted not there it. anymore. But there was also the gem cutter's explanation of someone else who wanted it as well. Yeah, but he stole tea, so I don't want to sell it to him. I want to sell it to the person that didn't steal tea. I mean, if you want to call someone else breaking it off and selling it to him, stealing, I'm not sure. <laughs> Somebody stole it. Nobody's happy about it. And there. I don't want to sell it to anyone. Here. And as you guys are packing up, there's Willa. Over by two children that look like they're pissing themselves. And she's like, 
tell me who took it. And she's like using her creepy voice to get them. And then they piss themselves. Yeah, they just run off screaming in terror. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find Suri. Still have a thing for her. Maybe she'll tell me who did it. Give me an investigation check while they're packing up the campsite. Cool. Do I have anything for investigation? No. <clears throat> Is this a side quest? <laughs> it's my side quest. Uh, it's, it's just an eight. Just an eight? Yeah, no sign of her. Pretty big encampment. It's a side quest. I think being a little kid would be cool. Bring me one. <laughs> right, Jerry. I'm sorry. This is for medical purposes only. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Turn your head to cough. Um, yeah. I'll take so a little bit of hair. Once we're once we're packed, we're gonna yes, take Mr. the. Oh, my God. <laughs> you went there. Once we're packed, we're gonna take the Vardo up with us because mm -hmm. I don't want to have to walk back down here. Okay. There's roads, right? Takes a little while. Yeah, there's pathways, there's roads, there's like little inlets in and out of the fairgrounds that you guys are currently camped in. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say it takes you about 20 minutes to hook up the mastodons for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, the wagon. They pull it like it weighs nothing. Um, they seem to know basic commands. Okay. Um, you guys are currently on your stag and elk. And, I put um, the goat inside the bardo and uh, tie the horses to the back of the wagon. Okay. You can smell those bardo. horses. Probably Is she her riding her own wagon or are you trailing it from behind? I have to find out from her. Okay. So she we'll say all this takes a little... She about tying it up to the well, wagon. But water. whether she was joking about oh. that or... I mean, you know. We say things, but do we mean them? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah. Like, for instance, to... I'm not actually going to put the children on a pipe. I'll just think about it really hard. Does that mean, <laughs> wait, does that mean when you're putting the children on a pipe, does that mean that you take them up to the Dawn Marshal and set them on her lap? Yep. <laughs> putting fair. them on a pipe? Please. <laughs> We'll just spend them just fine. <laughs> Jerry's like, amendment number 562. Any day now, Any they're day. doomed. <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and proceed. Okay, so uh, so eventually, you guys, after about an hour of just getting all your gear together, getting mm -hmm. everything ready for the road, um, you pull up to where the pavilion area is. Dismount. The guards kind of usher you through the gateway. I'm going to to pack some gold to the guards, and I'm going to ask them to make sure no one messes with the wolf skull on the back of the bardo please yeah yeah that absolutely one? that's a really cool skull <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll keep an eye on it for you i remember what it looks like i'm sure you do give it a try you're can pretty, i stand behind you're pretty fluffy my... and cute they don't really view you that can way I stand behind her? <laughs> my uh my pedals flip up <laughs> You could have advantage, yeah. yeah, as well as like being creepy behind you without you knowing. Well, I mean, oh, I got a natty twenty. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry, don't worry, we got gotcha. you. That's, a, that's well, a twenty-two. Yeah, just take your creepy friends with you. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Pocket, especially her. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Please get the fuck out of here. We'll be back. Just change my pants. Okay, and now uh, we all go in. Yeah, you guys head on into the go pavilion. Um, it's empty for the most part. There's one table. You can see a hungover gnome. She's probably fretting her decision to drink last night. She's just wearing a robe. Her hair is tied back in like a silver bun. And she's just like got her hand in her head and she's leaning over a plate of eggs and bacon. And um, she looks up. Oh. I'm going to try and put. Like, I'm, I'm slowly trying to make my good berries more effective than just regular good berries to do more healing. So I'm going to try and put some, like, something for headaches in. Like, something that will help. White willow bark? Yeah. Buffering? White, wait, white. Buffering? Wait, 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 guys, guys. White willow bark. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hand it to her. Uh, what's this? It's a good berry. I figure your stomach can't handle much. Ugh. Yes, I used to get these from Scanlan. Then I'd wake up without any memory. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Pops it in her mouth. <laughs> I, I am proficient in medicine, so. Oh. Well, did you all have a good time last night? 
It's easy to sleep. It was a very lovely bargain. Um, I heard a rumor that you may be taking a bit of a sidetrack. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? Glassboro. Gla glass. Glass. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see what happened to the to... tax collectors there. I, I would appreciate that. That revenue is needed. Um, some of the rumors around that were a little bit odd, but I suspect. How do you feel about the tax collectors themselves? Well, they, they do their job. Me? They, I mean, you got to keep a city running. It's just not good intentions and bacon in the morning that keeps the city going. What would the rumors be? Oh well. I mean, she's like holding a piece of bacon. Um, well, well, first of all, they, they, I've heard rumors that the ice worms have traveled quite suddenly recently. The gardens fort That's correct. had a run in. We yeah. were there. We were there. Yes, I had, had heard that notion and drove it off, I believe. Well, I, I heard from my to captain. Keep it. Yes. You we were trying to kill it. it. It got away. Are you okay, Jerry? He, he really wanted a sample. Oh. Oh. Of it. oh. Yes. Of course. I mean, always good to build up one's knowledge about the rarity of creatures. <laughs> she stares at him, fixated on his bald eyebrows. That leaves Anyways. Um. And so, steal a piece of bacon. oh come on, Grog was walled until he got that belt of belt or uh, or fine. I don't that weird. know how well you know our bacon. histories, but yeah, but Grog had eyebrows. Did he? I thought the last were completely naked. I had a long time to get to this planet, so I watched all the YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. You're not even real. Do you all know much about a ruin? Words. Up near the um, Kodos Pass, north of Vasselheim, deep tundra north. Up near what pass? Um, up near the one um, we were at. Kodosk Pass. The one we were at. Out of character, no. The one we. No, no it's it's a... north of Vasselheim. Oh, north of that. Okay. Yeah. There's a, a a place that holds a specific significance to me. It's called Rimfang's Ruin. That sounds familiar. Used to be a lair of an ancient white dragon. There was something in that lair that we never recovered. I had a chance to go back. The dragon hasn't been seen for well over a century, from what I understand. I was wondering. As being the first official members of my watch, we could head up there, recover the item. Bring it back to the vaults of Vasselheim. It can be safely stowed away. What's the item? I recall it was a stone, roughly a foot across in diameter, but very well polished with intricate designs in it. Um, Percival had lived long enough, I suppose he would have had his own thoughts about it, but. He was convinced it was a relic of some sort, a relic of an old magic, but he never really had a chance to study it, and we just kind of lost track of it. Didn't really want to deal with that dragon again, so we just all kind of agreed at some point we'd go back for it. It's black and green, almost marbled in form. The problem is it's frozen in Rimfeng Ruin Wall, so we'll have to figure out a way to get it out. Now, Standing is the dragon may have moved on. I don't know. I'd be a bit mindful. Um, we've also heard of some recent yeti migrations up in that area, as well as well, old porcelain face himself, um, the ghosted. Um, he's been seen up there as well. The chief, the frost giant clans. You may have to barter with him to gain access to the Tordesk Pass. What was his name? Ghosted? Uh, uh, the Ghosted, Ghosted is the name he goes by. Uh, the clans up there and the Frost Giants up there are very superstitious. 
They live a tribal existence. And they keep an eye on the toilet desk. Uh, we pay the fee. They don't really have what, much. What does he like? Eh. Uh, food, drink. Um, they not barter? A... Yeah, he, they just said, have to pay him off. Have to barter. Well, you did, I mean, it helps. What would you give him? Is it Frost Giant? Yes, frost giants. Oh, I can I can become a little miniature frost giant. <laughs> you don't want them to keep you. <laughs> It'll be adorable. How do you know? <laughs> it's a frost giant sleep. Okay. <laughs> you watch this cherry start to crawl inside. <laughs> I already got so I already got one. Number five. All right, I got a toenail. Oh, that's right. No, it was a, a hair. It was a beard hair. Oh, beard hair. Oh, yeah, right. beard, beard hair. hair. Yeah. I know because it's on my list. It should be on my list. I'll probably just use the the probe like that because it's getting like way oh, too creepy. I'll a little more Bailey at the end of the ta table. What? I'll just use it to process uh, my leftover DNA. Bailey. She does copious note taking. I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> I assume you this is not a keyboard. There. What would you have given him? Oh, I would normally bring him a drink. If there's anything Grog has taught me, if you're big. Dumb and thirsty. Always have good whiskey or brew on you, and you'll usually get by quite nicely. Yes, mine's such a thing. Do you have some uh, kegs of stuff? No, we kegs? didn't bring any with us. I'm sorry. Okay, well, if we have to go through Vasselheim to get there, we can pick some up in Vasselheim. That's true. Is that the first place you want us to go after Glass Cove? I think so. I okay. think um, get yourselves settled in at Vasselheim. Um, my understanding is the Azure Hammer gave you a residence. Perhaps spend a little time there to know the politics. I plan on traveling to Shokum and paying a visit to um, uh, Amman for a bit to meet up with Alora, and then I'll be back. Um, but uh, this is the summer season. Not too much usually goes on right now. Um, and then when you feel ready, head up to Rimfang's ruins and retrieve the item for me. Try to stay out of some trouble. Keep in a little bit so you know what's going on, but I know how it is. Do you know anything about dragons? I've heard that they're. I'm sorry, dear, I can't hear you. Yes, I said, do you know so anything <laughs> about dragons? I thought there might be some still up there, or have come back. Well, I mean, ever since the Chroma Conclave was defeated and some stability and uh, brought to the world a bit, there haven't been that many sighted. Um, Remfang hasn't been seen in well over a hundred years. Um, but you never know. Blue and white dragons are often up in the tundra. Uh, but they would be lesser beasts than Remfang. But who knows? Most of the north we avoid. What would you, what would you recommend? If well, we had would, to fight one. I wouldn't. Pretty nasty creatures. Sometimes you're like, you have to take into your own hands. Fair. My feet are good at running when necessary, but if you have to fight one, um, be mindful of its breath weapon. Um, keep into account Jeez. they are not idiot creatures. Well, who's their, how's their eyesight? Uh, Finally, someone that pretty good. Understands your me. invisibility will be quite useless to them. They they will see right through you. Um, the age of the creature will determine its power. The whites and blue dragons tend to be a bit more feral, but some of the gemstone dragons can be a little bit more dangerous. Some of the other chroma dragons, I don't think the black and reds reside up there much. You can usually find the red dragons near volcanic quarters and blacks and greens in swamps or forests. As you know, this allows mostly ice tundra, glaciers, and great snowy drifts 90% of the time. I haven't had a dragon incursion for a very long time. I don't suspect you'll come across one. The worm migration worries me. Yes, that's a good point. Are they being scared to the south, or are they merely migrating to the south? Perhaps there is something going on up there. I don't know. Um, they are more prone, I believe, to... I was going to say, we did discuss about the worms, because, mm -hmm. so we know quite a bit about the worms. My understanding is they're closer up towards the Hedrick region, is where they come from. The Across from the Hedrick wall that's been built, in fact, I believe you'll have to go through there to make your way up into the northern Dundra. 
Um, if you feel inclined, if Fort Hedrick a, a, a pass by, see what there has been going on there. Information is as valuable as coin. It'll help us a great deal. Speaking of which, what is our reward for re returning your item? Oh, keeping the world safe is one. You will receive stipends and you will be paid for your efforts. Don't have any fear about that. I prefer to see that altruistic needs come first. And then based on challenges, we'll see to it that you are properly paid. Also, there are opportunities of influence in the city as well. Doing such works. Political seats. Council chambers that need watching. Such the things. The master Timberlings need a voice. Mm -hmm. I would prefer you stay out of the Vasper Timberlands. Those places are quite dangerous. Oh You're very dangerous, Willa. Yeah. Anyways, back to the guard <laughs> lady freaking me out versus the tree freaking me out. Anyways, um, you'll be duly recompensated, I assure you. Plus, there's a finder's... Well, whatever you find there of wealth is yours to keep. I am merely asking for the return of a single... I can assure you, we left quite a few things behind in yeah. Red Bank. Dragon Fork. Dragon Fork. If we, if we have to melt ice, somebody else is going to have to do it. So I'm not turning myself into firework. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet you burn well. Mm. <laughs> Keep in mind, any temples at the Seren Ray, you're free to stay there if you choose to. Uh, they will give you comfort, food, quarter. Um... Merely show them the emblem that I'm giving you today. Will suffice. How do you spell Serenay? Uh, S E R R A N I E, I believe. I'll have to look it up later. I'm thinking by memory. Well, any other questions, concerns? Do I get to keep this one? I asked mm -hmm. Amber so that I could keep the last one, but they took it away. Don't work for them, dear. No, it was theirs that they gave you to prove that you worked for them. The emblem I'm giving you, you're free to keep. I have many hundreds of them. Ooh, a new one. <laughs> I want it written on leather. Mm. <laughs> Tell you what, she pulls out her knife, goes over your, she goes over to your bark-like skin, starts carving it. This is yours to keep, love, Pike. There you go. 20 hit points of damage. <laughs> oh, wait, don't, don't forget that stab damage. So, with that, you guys have met with Pike for breakfast. You have acquired the Saren Ray emblems that allow you to gain access to any Saren Ray temples for quarters or support. Have a semblance of a couple opportunities at this point. And that's where we're going to leave off tonight. And we're going to wrap it up. What did you think, Carla? No, bad. Shiloh? Well, different, right? <laughs> Not your AD and D session, is it? Yeah, the, the last ones I did were a lot more dice rolling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot more mechanical. This is a much more narrative approach. Give you guys the ability to build out your character and stuff. So, I think we're meeting next Monday, correct? Okay. However, the Monday after that is Labor Day. What's everybody's thought for that? I, I know we have a party going on that day, maybe, or just the weekend. Sunday. The Sunday before it. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are up for it, let me know. But I also I'm... know it's a three-day weekend, although you're retired. And, you know, I'll just let me know. Uh, I'll be working. Yeah, you'll be here working with me anyways. I'll probably be running my normal uh, Monday night, um, my 3 o'clock game anyway. So. I think I'll actually be working till. not sure if you the spa is open until 5.30 in that night. It's a holiday. Yeah. yeah. Let's know. Right. That's why we did the 7.15-ish start time to give everybody plenty of time to get home and get over here. Um, your stories. Um, get them wrapped up for me over the next couple weeks and have Bella or Callista send them to me in Discord. Because I know you guys probably don't use Discord, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just need to get a digital copy so I can put it in my one note and start adding to it and doing all the builds off of it and stuff like that so. you can only join the discord which is great they will not touch discord i'm out of you no no it might. you can even put it on your phone it's allergies great. are killing me right now what happened i can't care for a long i'm allergic to him 
Thanks, everyone, for coming out and hanging out with us. Uh, we'll be back here next Monday, but we are taking Tuesday night off. No denizens and their masters. Uh, Grainlands is over at the D&D Club. You can visit us there. Our PG and Co. will be on. We're going to be talking about D&D 1 or 1 d and I don't know what they're calling it, but that's the moniker of the new. And, yeah, that's what they're calling it. They're getting rid of 5th edition and they're getting rid of all editions and just calling it 1 d and I think. But their first playtest uh, content I've been reading, um, I'm, I'm also going to do a Spelljammer campaign. Um, I'm not thrilled about the cost of the book. I wouldn't recommend. Anyways, um, not a fan about the cost to content ratio, for sure. So, good night, everybody. Stay safe, be kind, and play, play again.